Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hotline League episode 153. It is a holiday special here as we're all drinking eggnog and celebrating the holiday. Uh, that's happening, right? We, we all agreed on that. This is an almond mo uh, roca latte, which uh, doesn't taste that good. Okay. Wow. Well, anyway, uh, let me go ahead and first shout out Alienware. Thank you for sponsoring the show. We'll talk more about them later. Next up, I will introduce my constant co-host, Mark Zimmerman. Mark, how's it been? Uh, it's been pretty good. It's a slow week, but All Stars is uh, coming up this week, which I think I can say I'll be doing some stuff for. Uh, can you? And so I'm excited for that to roll around. Okay. I didn't even know you were doing stuff for it. I don't think I'm doing anything for it. I don't I don't believe that they are uh, supporting it from or supporting media for it. Speaking of supporting media for it, we have Commissioner Greeley here from the LCS. How's it going, Greeley? Uh, it is going all right. Thanks for having me uh, yet again. Yes. Yeah, you were on both of our guests were not on or were on not too long ago. Um, and so it's it's great to have you guys back on for the the first hour or so of the show uh, as we're going to be discussing the format changes, uh, which also leads us to Hunter from Golden Guardians. How's it going, Hunter? It's great. It's great to be here. Are you going to be able to be here the whole time, or are you? I know that you have. Um, uh, <coughs> I could be a, having a baby any minute. Okay. Uh, sometime this week, it's going to happen. So uh, it's I'm, it's not to the minute. Um, so okay. I'm probably good for the next hour at least. Okay, but it could. I mean, it could. At halfway through the show, you could. Say if I, I get a text, go. I am out of here. I'm not okay. going to explain. I'm just going to leave. Okay. Also, great. if you ever get terribly bored, you have the perfect out. Right. But uh, it only well, works once. We, we come out later on that the <laughs> child had not been born yet. And so nah, was, false alarms. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah. okay. See, okay. Totally That's normal. True. That's how that works. Thank you to everybody in the, the chat who's helping to uh, push the, the scam train. It's appreciated. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, today Riot announced officially some pretty big changes to the uh, LCS format for next year. Some very exciting, really exciting changes, I think, for the most part, have been received uh, really positively, which is why we have both uh, Greeley and Hunter on the show. Um, actually, Greeley, I, we, you know, originally, I think for something like this, we would normally have you on the show exclusively. But um, what, you know, you guys sort of reached out and pitched me the idea of having Hunter on the show. So I'd love to sort of hear what what this collaboration was like, because it sounds like it was a, a sort of a part of a broader discussion. Yeah, and I, I don't take any credit for the work my PR team does. Uh, so if they, if they pitch this, I'll, I'll uh, love and glory to them. Uh, every year we come back, at least for the last couple of years during franchising, we uh, go to the team uh, ownership groups and tell them, you know, it's uh, season's over. Time to start thinking about next year. Uh, let's all sit down and think about uh, format things that you guys might want to change, things that we might want to change. Uh, and for at least the last two years, um, Hunter and, and the folks over at Golden Guardians, Jonathan and Danan uh, as well, uh, have come into those meetings hyper-prepared uh, with an idea in mind that they've they've come in to pitch. Uh, and I, I think both years, you know, probably 80, 85% uh, of what they were were kicking around uh, managed to, to land and stick. Uh, but they've been... Uh, great partners for us uh, on a kind of league operations side. Obviously, Hunter uh, was in league operations at Riot uh, in a in a past life. Um, you know, we get a ton of feedback from all the teams, so this wasn't just uh, strictly a, a Riot Golden Guardians collabo. But um, you know, we do get a lot of uh, you know a lot of the original thinking does come from um, Hunter and his team, so uh, it'll make some sense uh, for Hunter to come on and talk about it from a, a team point of view. Um, as someone who worked uh, really closely uh, with us as well as the other ownership groups on on the format. Very good. Uh, by the way, are you are you on the East Coast right now? I don't know how late this is for you. I apologize I, I, if you're no, all, if you're drained. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm all right. I mean, uh, why? Am I, does my energy level see, seem low? Sleepy. Uh, sleepy. I, I would really? never say that. Um, but <laughs> perhaps you're ready for the holidays to hit. Uh, is the sense I'm getting. No, it's uh, it's. I am on the East Coast. It's a little after eleven here, and it's been a been a long day. But you know what? This uh, being here gives me the energy to to power on through. So I'm very good. Here. Well, I'm glad. Let's let's take it that way. Um, so okay, we'll we'll give Greeley a, a bit of a break then, and uh, and toss it over Hunter. Um, as we sort of, I have a, a video that we made uh, internally at TGI that we can sort of show as well while you're talking about this. But do you want to sort of break down what the um, how the the format works and sort of what the big changes are and all that stuff. Yeah. 
Um, I think one of the biggest changes is that after kind of trying out Friday nights, uh, Monday nights, Friday nights, but a third day, um, and uh, we uh, convinced uh, we're moving to three full days. And moving to three full days gives a lot of flexibility in the schedule. It basically lets us run the same spring split in six weeks instead of nine weeks. And um, and what I've been pushing since you know the and the end of the first year of franchising is to to use those to move to three days and use those first three weeks to do a kickoff tournament or a start of season tournament where um, we put all our fancy new rosters and imports and rookies and whatever into into a you know interesting and different format and sort of start the season off with a bang and then just uh, you know for this first one there's this draft format Greeley may want to speak to you know that, that a little bit um, and then do spring split in six weeks so condense everything down. Um, I think historically, like spring splits in general tend to tend to dip a little in the middle. People are excited at the beginning. There's a little dip in the middle, and then people get excited at the end. So when you condense it down, you kind of condense down the room for that dip, um, which which hopefully is just sort of win 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 for everybody. Um, uh, I'm trying to keep pace with the video, but I think I you know I can't no, see you're, it in you're real good. time. This so, could just air okay. as B roll. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Then so um so, you know, one of the things we've been trying to solve for for the whole time is is, you know, um how do you have the end of season be the ultimate climactic point of the year, right? Um I think the gauntlet was always kind of anticlimactic. You would crown a champion and then one week later you're doing something else. And how does that thing sort of not either feel like it's a kind of, you know, something coming too late or sort of stepping on in its hype, you know, the championship moment. So last year we had a new playoff format. Uh, this year, I think it enhances that whole direction by combining spring split and summer split into one long season. And so the progression of the year overall is for this final big uh, summer playoff moment, which will crown a champion and send three, three teams to world. So spring and summer is combined. Um, you know, with three full days, we do a three-week kickoff into a six-week spring split, kind of condensed spring split, but same number of games. And in summer, that's just, we take the same nine weeks and do three weeks of, um, or sorry, three games per, per week for all teams. So uh, 27 games um, in summer instead. So it's more LCS is the super short of it. And we have this kind of semi-experimental, semi preseason y semi-real stakes event to start off the season the I think nicely branded by the the league lock in lock in tournament. Very good. Uh, so that that kind of brings us into it. I mean, how, um, what one thing I have for both you guys is like I had heard that there was going to be no spring pl split, no summer split, just one block. And uh, I don't know if uh, if people were just confused or anything like that. Was that something that you guys changed, or is this sort of like the ultimate iteration of that? Like what? How did, how did we end up with uh, the continuation of the spring split and the summer split in this way? So we gave different team owners different information so that we could figure out who was leaking all of our shit to you. <laughs> um, so this was super helpful for us. Um, there was never I'm an sorry, intention Steve. to. <laughs> there was never an intention to get rid of um, spring finals. Uh, it's been rebranded a little bit, but there'll still be a trophy on stage. There'll still be a, a trophy lift. We'll still talk about um, you know when Golden Guardians win spring split. Uh, easy to talk about with Hunter here. Uh, you know, they'll have their first LCS championship that'll compare to the LCS championships that that other uh, teams have. So uh, it's important for us to still have that roadshow, although obviously hard during COVID, but we're trying to, you know, future-proof formats. Um, important for us to have that, important for us to have those kind of uh, outreach moments, those championship moments, those trophy lift moments. You know, we, we didn't want to turn this into baseball uh, where we just have a, an 18-week slog uh, that goes into into the playoffs. I think, you know, Hunter talked about uh, viewership being really strong at the beginning uh, and really strong at the end, and it lags in the middle. If we move to one full season, uh, I think, you know, from week four or five of spring until week six or seven of summer, uh, it's a pretty good opportunity for people to tune out and just kind of catch the story at the end. And obviously, that's that's not something we want. We I think we uh, put together with with teams and pro players really good stories, really good narratives. Uh, throughout the split, and we want to keep people engaged. I think uh, it's really interesting, too, because we had um, a caller just last week talking about, you know, with the rumors of this happening, um, you know, how it would be difficult to compare, like, dynasties and championship trophies and all that kind of stuff um, without preserving a spring, you know, champion, you know, whatever the branding ends up being for it, but, but effectively that. So I'm really glad to see that, as well as the fact that, like you're saying, which is something I... I kind of overlooked, but now thinking about it is really important, which is like more opportunities for fans whenever we get out of the 
crisis and some semblance of normalcy can return to, to events. Like I couldn't imagine if there was one event a year in North America, like, sorry, Texas or, you know, Midwest areas, you know, like these are probably going to a coast every single year. Cause you only get one. I think, um, I'm, I'm excited to, to have that opportunity to go to more places around, around North America for events. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so I think one thing that a lot of people have been talking about, and we'll get some callers that are t- uh, t- asking about this too. Uh, for those that are watching, we're going to have them on for about the first hour. So we'll be able to ask Hunter and Greeley questions about it. But like, um, how much were you guys able to talk to the players about this? Because that is one of the biggest concerns I've seen coming out the gate is like, what is this going to do to player schedules? And are they going to be exhausted? And is this now they have to prepare for three games a week and et cetera. So how are you guys looking to sort of address that? And was that something you guys took into consideration? Yeah, definitely came into consideration on the team side and came up actually a lot in the conversations we had when we were kind of bouncing around different ideas. Um, So uh, I don't actually think this will increase the burden on players in particular from seeing them both on scrim days and on game days. Um, In a lot of ways, game days are, are lighter. Uh, which may not, you know, see it make sense from home, but um, there's a lot of downtime built into an, the LCS day itself because there's only sort of one hour of activity. There's a lot of lead up to that, sometimes anxiety and energy and other things, but um, there's a very different rhythm to those days. So having three of those instead of um, instead of two and sort of swapping out a scrim day I, is probably less work overall, like less raw hours of work. And so I, I don't think it will be a, an increase in the, you know, the sort of pace or the, the burnout that's affecting players. The rest of the schedule is is pretty much the same. You know, it's like the same. What, one of the ways we built the schedule originally is we just worked around the internationals and the raw total of weeks that were that were our sort of already existing in the schedule. We haven't added weeks. We haven't subtracted weeks. The same, same number of weeks in the total schedule start to finish. Um, and, you know, sort of same number of work days as it were into the into their work week, just shuffled around a little bit differently. I heard a ton of complaints, both from GMs and from some pro players, uh, that the schedule we ran last year where you had an uneven schedule, like some days, some uh, weeks you played Friday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday, uh, it was screwing up a lot of things, right? Your normal cadence, your normal schedule. Um, I think the, the day off for players was floating. Sometimes it was Monday, sometimes it was a different day based on uh, when folks were playing. Um, and then something that you know we hadn't really thought about until we talked to pro players last year was a lot of pro players have friends that are on different teams. So if they wind up with uh, off days that aren't synced, they may they may not be able to go hang out with their friends or have dinner or like feel normal uh, for two three weeks on end. So one of the things this schedule also does is it puts everybody back on the same schedule, right? Everyone absolutely will have three games uh, every week during during regular season. Uh, they'll have the same off day. They'll have the same scrim blocks, um, so we're, we don't have to deal with some of those issues as well. And Mark, I already see you starting to pull people into the waiting room. Uh, do you want to give a, a quick uh, briefer while we, we ask maybe one or two more questions before we open it up to callers? Yeah, really quickly, if you guys have never seen the show before, it's a live call-in show. So if you want to get on here and discuss, go ahead and join the Discord link that I'm spamming in Twitch chat. When you get there, go ahead and join the pleb calls or sub calls voice channels. And then in the text channels above in pleb topics or subtopics, go ahead and write it in whatever your question is uh, about the format. And even maybe some feedback. I like this part. I don't like this part. Whatever it is, um, you know, let us know. And if I like it, I will pull you into the waiting room where you will hang out until it's your turn. We'll do a quick audio check to make sure that your microphone's working, and then we'll pull you on air. Just go to that last question. You know, one of the nice parts about having Darshan on the roster last year is we had easy access to the Players Association to run ideas by and bounce ideas off of. And... Um, uh, Jonathan McDaniel, who's in the chat, you know, always kept a pretty open uh, line of conversation with Darshan and the players around uh, format ideas and stuff to make sure that we were getting a lot of feedback from them before we were pitching something that they would find to be unworkable. So we try to close that loop, you know, as much as we can in the in the ideation process. So do you think that this is this stuff will be generally considered to be well received from pro players? You guys don't expect to see too many people speaking out against it or having issues with it? I don't. I, I, I don't either, but I've been surprised before. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the one thing you can be sure of is the players don't know that they like or dislike something until they're in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's until, true. Until but at least Double Lift's not in the league this year to complain to in a Travis interview. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just randomly on stream, they get asked a question. And in that moment, they, they form their opinion on it for the first time. Uh, either way, uh, Mark, should we start grabbing people?
Sure, let's go ahead. Um, if you're in the waiting room, people, make sure you uh, undeafen so you can hear me when I come in and ask if you're ready. Uh, someone's about to not go first, despite being the first one in there, because they're deafened. Uh, and yeah, I see Emily in the chat, by the way, uh, who is talking about having a hot take or a question. I think uh, this is normally we look for hot takes, but I think questions uh, for this is, is fine just because we kind of want to open up the floor to anybody that are that want to learn sort of about the format and the philosophy and how this all impacts stuff and all that kind of kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, Greeley, how much work do you got? Is your is your months basically done? Are you able to chill now? Uh, because all stars is like a global, the global team puts that on. Right. So are you in a good place now? No, there's no chill. It's esports, man. Uh, we've got, we've been in addition to the other esports, right? Obviously we had first strike last weekend. We had, uh, or two weekends ago, we had legends of Runeterra this past weekend. We've got TFT next weekend. Um, so we're watching uh, and working on a bunch of that stuff. But as far as the LCS goes, the team has been in high gear, uh, you know, trying to get ready for start of spring, you know, riot closes on Friday. So we're closed for two weeks and uh, we'll get, we'll get a bunch of downtime during then. But even during that period, we'll still, you know, talking to teams, working on some rule book stuff. There's always, always work to be done. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it uh, looks like our first caller is here to do, is that how you say it? To do? Yeah. <laughs> to do where are you calling from? Uh, calling from Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Oh, local. Okay. Well, what do you yeah. want to talk about on the show? <laughs> so my question is for Chris Greeley. Because, you know, he might have to go to bed soon. But uh, basically, my question is in regards to, like, the early game season you guys kind of introduced. Uh, I was just kind of wondering, like, what your thought process was into, like, introducing that into the LCS. And, like, with that, it kind of made me think, why didn't you necessarily like, include, like, academy teams or academy teams the ability to play against LCS teams, maybe even, like, later in the split? Because it seems like you also expanded that. So, and if you did have them play with that, like, you think jeopardize the credibility of like LCS teams? Cause you know, if they lost, that would kind of put them in a really bad place in general. But yeah, that's my question. Yeah, and you're, you're asking specifically about the start of season tournament, right? Yeah, and then maybe like also at the end, I saw also in the club topics that someone suggested, you know, maybe the ninth and 10th te place LCS team maybe plays against the academy team. So like in the academy playoffs, which would be kind of cool. I mean, there's a lot of downtime between like worlds and like, regular season at uh, the end of the season. So maybe that'd be something. That, I think that's a second, a second topic. So I just want to make sure we focus on that first one, yeah. um, which is, it sounds like you're saying, what was the philosophy behind the kickoff tournament and why not have it be a thing where you're mixing in Academy teams? Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to give, uh, we wanted to do a couple of things, right? We wanted to give teams an opportunity to show off new rosters, new players, new combinations. Uh, we also wanted to give teams an opportunity to experiment um, as we're going into spring split, if you've got a couple of folks on the roster, you want to see other rosters pulling together, you want to give them some competition, you want to give them a bunch of games. We wanted to create an atmosphere uh, to do that. And obviously we want uh, the tournament to be entertaining. Right? Worst thing we can do is put on a three week tournament that nobody cares about, uh, you know, kind of waste of time for, for all of us. Uh, we did talk a lot about who should be playing in that tournament. So we talked about academy teams. Uh, with some of the changes to at, uh, academy and amateur this year, we talked about amateur teams and college teams. And, you know, what if we went 24 teams kind of coming in and, and what does that wind up looking like? Ultimately, with all the changes that we're putting into academy and amateur, uh, we thought it was better to kind of you know start small. Right. Let's crawl and see if see how fans like the tournaments, what teams say about the tournaments are, are, are pro players happy to be playing there uh, and potentially look to expand in the future. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a format uh, for the tournament that felt good, that was compelling. We tried a lot of uh, really interesting things. I know Hunter's team had a, had a really cool format that we just couldn't find a way to explain to people. Um, so we ultimately pivoted away from that. We had a format on the table for a while that went from a group format into kind of a cool double gauntlet that, that met in the middle. Um, that was a fun one. But uh, kind of the things we wanted to focus on were making sure that a bunch of teams got to play a bunch of games against each other. Uh, you know, a huge loss for us would be if the, you know, we had one or two teams that played once or twice and then had two weeks off. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that teams were getting games, uh, we're getting series. We have some best of threes in there, some best of fives as well, uh, and wanted to mix it up. Uh, we've been playing around with this format for, a, for, or this concept for a long time. You know, Hunter mentioned bringing it up before uh, in prior years. We had whole working sessions. We, we had something called the LCS Scramble. 
uh, that was, you know, we were going to play completely in the studio with every team in a green room. Uh, and they would basically finish a game and then just go right into another game. And we had this crazy system that matched them all up. And, you know, ultimately it, it was something that, that died on that whiteboard, but uh, we've, we've kept the idea open for a while. The uh, idea behind it was the, was uh, the NFL red zone package that we eventually turned over and used for Academy rush. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've played with a lot of ideas for this. I hope, um, you know, from our perspective, at least from the league's perspective, that, uh, folks are interested. People tune in. Um, the pro players like playing in it. The teams think it was is worthwhile. And then for next year, you know, I'm sure Hunter and his team are going to walk into the uh, <laughs> format meeting with some big deck about how we should go from 10 teams to 24 teams, and here's how we should pick who's coming in. We'll also, we'll also have a year of amateur and academy and college uh, folks playing in Tier 1 and Tier 2 tournaments that uh, I think will also be a, a good source for us to look at as well. I just can't wait to hear how Hunter comes in at the end of the year and be like, this format sucked. And everyone's like, wait, but Hunter, <laughs> you made this format. Not that, but I do think, um, look, one of the things that I think uh, we, sh we should be under no illusions that we figured out how to run professional League of Legends at this point, like eight, you know, 10, ten years into this, ten, eight, eight seasons into the LCS. And there should be, I think, a pretty, you know, healthy appetite for experimentation and, and evolution in the, in the general format for the whole thing. I think one of the challenges historically is that there's been no place to experiment really. Like the, you know, you're always in games that matter a lot, right? Spring split, you had a champion. Summer split, you had a champion. That person's going to Worlds. You have MSI stakes. You know, All Stars was like the only kind of thing, and it wasn't a real event in the same way. So, um, what I like about this kickoff tournament is that every year we should be doing something you've never seen before, in my opinion. And we will come to Chris with a bunch of things that he can't explain to anybody because no one's ever seen them before and they're weird. But I think that's some of the idea is to do some weird things because we're going to discover when we do them that some of them are really good. And then they can, you know, trickle into the regular season or our summer playoffs or Worlds or MSI or who knows who knows where they find. But we need that we need that space, I think, for, for experimentation at the, at the professional tier. Um, and that's kind of what the, the lock-in is for. So the caller's question about amateur teams, the only thing I, and academy teams, the only thing I'd add is that um, year over year in amateur academy, we should expect really high variance in the rosters. And it makes it hard in one sense to reward the best academy teams from the year before with presence in this tournament because uh, the turnover there could be really significant. Um, and it's just, it's a sort of a, an additional kind of thing we have to figure out as we see what new amateur and academy looks like over the course of this year is how much is that continuity, you know, relevant the next year, the success of one year going into the next year. To, to ask a, a bit of a follow-up um, related to the caller's question, less specifically about, you know, later on in the year, like he was saying, but even just, is there any concern about a academy team coming in at some point and thrashing, you know, through one of these kind of mixed pool uh, tournaments potentially and just destroying an LCS team and then, you know, having to, to come to terms with that. Is that a concern or is that something that you guys would be like, no, that's, that's a, that'd be fine to us? Um, I, I'm not sure it would happen. Um, <laughs> I think if it did happen, it, I mean, look, I might not be concerned if it happened to an LCS team. I'm sure that LCS team wouldn't feel wouldn't feel too great about it, uh, or the folks that put that team together. But that's you know that's one of the things the changes to the academy and amateur system were, were meant to deal with, right? The idea that we have academy teams that can beat LCS teams, while good for conversation, right? and they kind of keep keep shows like Hotline League rolling along uh, when you know there's no news cycle going on. Uh, it's the worst thing for the region. Right? We want the best players playing at the LCS level, you know, kind of full stop. So um, I think that would be the bigger concern from a league perspective. If Golden Guardians Academy team came in and, I don't know, mopped up Cloud9's uh, LCS team, I think we'd have real concerns about why those players were sitting in Academy when they could be playing at an LCS. This team. guy's better than Perks. Get this guy Get this guy in the league. That's uh, Yundi. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, so I think, yeah, I have the same answer. I think it's both. It both would be concerning. And if that's the result of a format, then we all have to, you know, it's a great showcase for those players and you have to figure out why they aren't in LCS yet. Yeah. Or why they are no longer in LCS. That seems like the more likely scenario to me. My, the, like, especially this year where you have several teams that are trying out new talent and you have a lot of the old guard who I think could still be in LCS, but people are like, hey, we don't want to invest into these players anymore because we think maybe they're not going to get us to Worlds. Like, 
that that would be it, it does feel like it would be very easy to build a team of uh former LCS players that will not be starting in 2021 and crush some of these these rookie based development teams that are in the LCS so i think it's interesting uh caller sorry i know we kind of talked a ton but uh do oh, you have any fine. any quick questions or anything that seems yeah like i mean so my follow up would be kind of like i think maybe this is like a tangent but in general like with all these rookie teams kind of coming in uh, people feel kind of a lot of unsure, but if we had like a tournament or something where we got to see like these play guys play on main stage or played against credible people, maybe kind of like you can say like EU Masters and how they have their old tournament, it'd be easier for them to pass the eye test and ho hopefully do better. And like realistically, I would really like to push possibly for like an end of season tournament or something where they get to play against LCS teams because therefore you get to see. Like there's actually like an end game where they get to go and play and you get to see them and possibly bring them up. But yeah, that's what I would probably push for, but I know it's not really a question, but that's my input. <laughs> well, either you're not going to see them play LCS teams this year, but uh, you do have an end of season tournament in the Proving Grounds um, where you'll see uh, the best of Academy and amateur playing against each other uh, after uh, LCS finals in both splits. So that is at least something to look forward to as we continue to build out. Any any shout outs you want to do? Oh, uh, I mean, I really uh, like Mark, and I think that he really likes to subvert, subvert expectations, and I think he's going to get mad at a topic, but then he just, you know, calmly responds. So, you know, that's why I like to call it Mark, and also thanks nice for holding out the show. Travis, I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. Have a good one. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to the next I'm like call. Game of Thrones Season 8, just subverting expectations and True. exploding as I do it. I, I just want to counter the, the last caller. Uh, I do not like Mark, uh, <laughs> and I think Mark sucks. It's great, too, because he left the channel, so he's not hearing. So you're just literally trash-talking <laughs> behind his back. Uh, That's amazing. Fish and Wolf, so thank you for the five months. Uh, Lucas, thank you for the Prime. And Flick Nickum, thank you for the eight Months. Travis, I have an idea of what we can get Kobe for Christmas. DM me. Well, uh, I already got him something, so we don't need to figure it out. Uh, Nike, uh, thank you for the two months. Um, I am not going to read that message. It's questionable at best. And yeah, I think. Ne oh, Necromorphine, a uh, Shuvol, Pour on Mars. It looks like our next caller is here. Student 179, what do you want, or where are you calling from? I uh, call from Denver currently. Denver. Well, what do you want to talk about on the show? Yeah, so um, I actually really like the new format. I think you guys did a really good job. I think it addresses a lot of problems that people have. And I don't know how many people notice, but I specifically like that the double round robin from spring is smaller, just in case team gets like real hot towards the end. Uh, but I was wondering why it was that you guys ended up going with a three day condensed schedule of games. Uh, you know, unlike a lot of other sports where people have travel. You know, it's very conceivable that you could play like two Monday night games or a Monday night game, a Tuesday night game, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night game and get like the same amount of games in. Um, so I was just kind of wondering what like the decision making behind that was and like why, you know, single night games on weekdays isn't a thing. Uh, and it doesn't seem like something Riot's really ever talked about adding. Yeah, there's a there's a couple reasons for it. Um, they're all I mean. You know, selfishly, they're all viewership based. Um, we tried some games on Monday. Uh, it turns out not a lot of people wanted to watch them. Uh, part of that was the fact that it was too late in the day. Uh, we were, uh, if we had run that show at, at 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, instead of running it at 5 or 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, probably would have been a lot better for folks. Something I realized when I spent a little time in the middle of the season back on the East Coast uh, and realized that our games were, were really late. Um, Part of it is a, there's a, an incredible expense to spin up the studio. So, like, let's talk not COVID world. Right? COVID, obviously, remote, uh, it's, it's easier to do a lot of stuff. But, um, you know, there's a to turn everything on in the studio, get all the folks in who operate the cameras and the audio, uh, costs a ton of money to do. Uh, and to only run one game uh, in those nights is, uh, you know, relatively inefficient for us. Um, you also wind up getting lost uh, in terms of uh, team uh, visibility. So, if I put you know, Hunter's game on, on Wednesday night or Tuesday night, uh, and that they're the only game on that night, right? There's nothing to lead in. There's nothing that follows them. Uh, it's hard to hard to actually get people to watch those games. We actually find even with the Friday Night League last summer was, was relatively successful. People watched, um, which was great. Um, 
but what what we tended to find was that viewership would build through the first game into the second game and then would kind of peak towards the end of the second game uh, the way it does on a Saturday or Sunday. And like all that told us was you need more games behind it right? as, as viewership continues to ramp up. Um, so you lose pieces of that too. It just, I know it works in conventional sports, right? You can, you can put on the TV most nights and watch an NBA game or a baseball game um, or a hockey game during season. Uh, but it, you know, our viewership patterns just don't, don't trend the same. Uh, and we really want to uh, create a compelling product for everybody to watch, right? We want the broadcast to be good and entertaining. We want folks to tune into it. Um, we don't want to create a culture where people check the winner or just watch the highlights in the morning, right? It, it kind of pulls apart for us. Hunter, I don't know if you have other thoughts. I know you've dealt with this for a long time and you see it from a team perspective as well. Yeah, I mean, when we were switching back to BO3s, we had, or when we were switching to BO3s back in whenever that was several years ago, we we talked through a lot of this stuff and um, I, I think really nailed it on all the sort of core reasons. Um, so, Do you, I throw okay. another one in there um, that Hunter, I think, touched on a little bit earlier about like team schedules lining up and stuff that happened uh, when, you know, you had this kind of offset schedule on Friday, uh, which would probably, I mean, without being really careful about how you did it, get exacerbated um, if you're doing something like this. Uh, you know, when you talk about the similarities to other sports, one thing that they have is they pretty much have practice teams. They're flying around the country. Um, there are reasons that a team can't play Saturday, Sunday. Uh, including physical wear and tear. And like, there, there's so many reasons that they actually space things out the way that they do uh, it, it, that it doesn't translate to, to league, in my opinion, um, where our players don't, or they, they scrim other teams. And so having s consistent schedules for everyone is, is pretty important. Um, and we can play back-to-back -back games. We can stack a weekend with all of our games, um, which, you know, most, most players in, in pro sports couldn't couldn't play multiple games in a row um and so like i think a lot of these things allow us to target our fan base which is also younger people who are busier on weeknights um you know a lot of people have school and stuff uh whereas on weekends they're more free and twitch as a whole like Greeley was saying you know viewership is is building when a channel turns on you don't get the same kind of carryover like happens in in tv as i understand it so like i think all these reasons uh make it pretty uh pretty difficult to, to put them inconsistently across weeknights. Yeah. Uh, Jim, Jim dubs in the chat says, how does Riot know viewership doesn't trend that way if they've never really tried it? Well, Greeley did mention they tried it on Mondays and two, I mean, this is just kind of a, a known factor on Twitch is like, if you, you, you want longer running stuff to accumulate viewership and, and have it. So this, this makes a ton of sense to me. I do have a question on the viewership stuff while we're on it. Um, do you guys expect viewership to be, lower uh in terms of concurrence but higher in minutes watched i guess over the course of this because in a in a in a sense like it's unlikely you're going to always have the same when you're spreading out the games a little bit more and you're you're having more games i'm guessing people will not just all watch 50 percent more or however much more so i'm guessing um there's an expectation that maybe like the highs will be lower but then like overall minutes will be um higher I think we have some expectations. So I, I, I bet that on Saturday and Sundays, we're not going to see a market change uh, in either direction. Um, my guess is that Friday performs better than Friday did last year uh, with a couple more games and, and an earlier start time. Uh, and I, I don't think it'll have an effect on the highs, right? People still want to watch the big moments. And there's a lot of fans who don't care about the normal game, right? They want to watch the biggest game that they feel has the most impact or when their favorite team plays a team that they also really like or don't like or whatever their individual motivations are. So um, I, I don't think this is going to be one of those situations where we add games and we expect that viewership um, is going to be lower. Uh, I, our average minute audience, which is generally the metric that we use and we report on, uh, which is just the uh, average number of, of viewers who watch uh, any minute of the broadcast, that'll probably go down. Uh, because we're putting more games into Friday, right? Uh, and there's more games on the calendar. But you know, ultimately, um, I think this is just better. I mean, I, you know, put, to put a fan hat on, right? I think this is just better for fans, right? More games, more matchups. If you want to see Golden Guardians play Team Liquid, you get to watch that um, more often now, right? You get an extra one of those matchups uh, when the fifth matchup comes around in summer. 
Uh, there'll kind of be some funky things with side selection. Uh, you get a tournament, you get some BO3s, you get some BO5s. Like I, I think it's a, a great time to be an LCS fan in terms of full map. Nice. And really in terms of everything. But. Well, I know we're, we only have another 20 or so minutes, so student, unfortunately, we don't have too much time for follow-ups, but is there any uh, anything you want to shout out? Uh, no, I, uh, you know, I think that answers the question pretty cleanly. Uh, maybe if you guys eventually get a bigger presence on the S and Riot games, you can kind of get that build up with like other esports and get a beneficial that way. That would be cool. So something to think about in the future. But thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate yeah, thanks it. Thanks so much, student. Have a good one. Yep. Bye. All right. Moving on to the next caller. Uh, thank you. To... I, have, I have a pitch for you guys. Have you ever considered being the ESPN of esports? Whoa. There's a you know, there's that, a space for that now. That's fresh and new, uh, and I've never heard that before. We should talk about that after this. Uh, let's yeah. see where it goes. Uh, G- uh, Chief, thank you for the uh, gifting a community sub. Jimmy Venn, who also gifted a sub to Mahmood. Uh, Turtle Lord, uh, if you don't like Malazan, thank you for the sub. That's uh, Hunter really likes Malazan, by the way. So, uh, Kenjo Olive, that's that's his thing. Uh, Abunai Karjiri. And B Crow Twitch. Looks like we got Coach Dom here. Coach Dom, where are you calling from? Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Oh, wow. How's the ping? Oh, it's great. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Uh, is that is that why you coach there? You can. It's easy to get people uh, to become gods in a low ping environment? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think there's a, a lot of good Illinois players, and I think that uh, the ping helps. Nice. Well, what do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, so my topic was about how um, with these changes, uh, it is more enticing to advertisers because um, I think it's going to lead to higher viewership and more watch time. Um, and with that, it's going to put more stability in the league. And on top of that, um, with the summer season playoff format, I think it makes more sense with 12 teams than it does with 10 teams. So I, I think it would be uh, beneficial for the team to or for the league to increase to 12 teams within like one or two years i feel like uh you trick you you threw in two different topics um so let's go with one what do you guys expect the sponsor impact to be i assume this is this is good i mean you have more stuff to to air is was that a, a contributing factor at all or is it scary expanding like this because maybe you sell stuff to sponsors and then in the future, you can't put the genie back in the bottle if you decide like this was too much. Like, how how do you guys navigate this from a sponsor and broadcast perspective? Uh, we spend a lot of time talking to the partnerships team, uh, who's out in market talking to sponsors and potential sponsors in our our agency. Um, so we we ran a lot of these ideas by them, uh, and you know you get those questions from them too, right? How long is this tournament going to be here next year? Like, should we go out and sell this? If we sell it, can we sell it to a multi-year sponsor or should this be a one-year thing um we try not to let uh, kind of either one either the the sponsor commitments or uh, the lead commitments drive the other side uh, so even in a world where our bd team came back and said hey we just sold the lockup tournament for three years uh if at the end of the season we all look at it and say hey, this wasn't worth running uh we'll go back to the sponsor and, and figure something out we have great sponsors uh in the lcs uh, all all folks who want to work with us and, and engage our fans. So, um, you know, we've never run into a situation where we've said, hey, we want to stop doing something. And they're like, so sorry, you signed a contract, so you're going to do it for two more years, whether you like it or not. Um, and that's important. I mean, obviously, we don't want to do, we don't want to create new formats where, you know, we're going to lose a, a bunch of opportunities to engage sponsors. But at the same time, uh, while NASCAR is an amazing sport, uh, we don't want to kind of have logos uh, slapped on everything. So we're, we're trying to walk that fine balance. Yeah. Um, and then I guess we can just go to the second question really quickly. I think really you've been asked this before on the show, but expansion to 12 teams. It's a topic we talk to owners about all the time. Um, you know, when the, when the time is right, we'll look to make the league bigger, but you know, ultimately, um, you know, the time hasn't been right so far, so we'll we'll get it figured out soon. Very good, Dom. Do you have any any quick follow ups? I I know we it's kind oh. of a quick answer, but do you think this format will lay the groundwork for an expansion uh, in the future? I, I mean, 
certainly having formats that are conducive to 12 teams is is helpful but you know for every expansion conversation we've ever had with the ownership groups no one has ever raised a hand and said all right well everything else looks like it lines up uh, but the format doesn't isn't conducive for 12 teams so let's not expand and we'll figure it out in the future um, but it's you know I think it's a, another helpful thing but you know certainly when you're talking about going out into market and selling teams for you know 40 50 million dollars a pop um, you know, the last thing you're, you're overly concerned about is the format, you know, in that world, we would just change the format if it didn't work for 12 teams. Is that, mm-hmm. is that what you would value an LCS spot at right now, Greeley? You know, 70, 80 million, maybe a hundred million. Who knows? <laughs> the size limit. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I was Keep worried going. that like, going. this would not be, a ten, a, you know, something clippable for this, you know, and, uh, now I'm glad that there's, there's something to draw people to the VOD. Yeah, there you go. Someone uh, send it to Mr. Beast. <laughs> I spent seventy million dollars on this LCS team. And it got twelfth place. Um. Anyway, thank you, Dom, for the the call. Any shout outs that you want to make before we move on to the next caller? Uh, <clears throat> shout out to Travis Sue, the best jungler in Michigan. Wait, did you say Travis? Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Different Travis, I, but yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll catch you next time. I take issue with that on on both accounts. That one, you're a jungler, even, and two, that you're in Michigan. That would have been surprising. I've I've been up to a lot this offseason. Uh, thank you to Nucle for the gifted sub, uh, Luardix, Avura, the one and only Corbin for gifting a sub, uh, Crying Clownfish, uh, Hunter for the Prime, the only game show, Bloomingberries. It looks like we're almost caught back up. Uh, Anonymous Zafar. Uh, for Kobe and Master Padawan and Eugene Eugene. Okay, Mark is here, but he didn't bring anyone with him, so I'm not sure if that's gonna. Oh, now Mark swapped with somebody else. Okay, now Mark disconnected, and now Mark is back. That was I don't exciting. Know what the... Going on there. I did, that was that was fun. <laughs> the Kevin is here. Kevin, where are you calling from? Uh, San Diego, California. Where in California? San Diego. San Diego, my hometown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whereabouts in San Diego? Like actual San Diego? Um, yeah, actual San Diego. If you know uh, LA Gardens, that area? Yeah. 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 Well, what do you want to talk about on the show? Um, today I had a question for Commissioner Greenlee about um, players. And since it's, this is one big season, from my understanding, um, what does he think about, I guess, players going into like burnout since they're taking, uh, I guess, they're taking more, um, more games and they're taking more tournaments? And what are you going to do to help like ease the burnout players might feel? Yeah, man, appreciate the question, and I'd, I'd love to hear from Hunter on this too. Um, uh, ultimately, we're uh, we are adding some games. Uh, the the season opening tournament for the teams that make the finals will play a bunch more games. Um, for you know, uh, every team will play an extra round robin in summer, but you know, ultimately, we're still looking at two splits. There's still a bunch of downtime if your team doesn't. Make the playoffs in spring, uh, you know, your season ends uh, sometime at the end of March or beginning of April, uh, and you sit around and watch all the teams in the playoffs. And then for the nine teams that don't make MSI, uh, they'll have a, you know, a month and a half, two months off. Uh, and we'll see the same thing coming out of summer as well. So uh, we're not expecting that the uh, overall lift for, for pro players is going to go up. Uh, we're hoping certainty in the schedule uh, helps them feel more comfortable with uh, their commitments and, uh understanding what days they have on and what days they have off when they can see their friends and their, their girlfriends or boyfriends or whoever they're going to see. Um, and ultimately we, we think it'll make it a little bit easier for them, uh, especially, you know, uh, Hunter talked about it a little bit before on, on game days, there's uh, well, maybe a little bit more anxiety. There is a, a kind of less lift on a game day than you'd find on a normal scrim day. Hunter, you you deal with your players every day. I don't know if you've got uh, anything to add to that. Well, and, no, and I, I mean, we, I think I, I, Oh, go ahead, Hunter. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Travis. I was going to say, I know we kind of talked about this a bit, er, a bit earlier, but I do, I mean, one thing I'll, I'll toss in with this conversation with Hunter is like, you guys are starting earlier. Like the, it previously would have started several more weeks or at least one more week into January. There is a lot more out the gate. You know, it's, you, you are asking more of the pro players. So to say like the time commitment is the same is maybe not entirely accurate because they are getting ready for additional games. There might be additional stress on that. They ha- start earlier. There is this tournament, which is perhaps a little bit more stressful than just two days of of games, uh, regular season games. Like th- there is way more competition this year 
you can't say fans were giving you guys more competition, but pro players were expecting the same from you, right? Because it is it is a bit of a different mix for them, at least. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess that's true in the abstract. Honestly, like I, I, I really don't think w the season start date has varied over the years. You can go back and find years where we started at this exact week and where we didn't. Some of that is where MSI falls, and you're kind of working backwards from international events. You're also working backwards from worlds and and stuff. So there's there's a little bit of flex. The actual competitive calendar, I don't think, is any longer. Greeley, correct me if I'm wrong. Under this format, it's the same number of weeks. We've added a competitive day each week, but that's taking the place of a scrim day and it's regulating and providing consistency for everybody's schedule. Like I really, I, I think top teams are going to play a lot of games. They, they did in the previous year. The deeper you go into playoffs, the more series you play. We increase the complexity of playoff formats. So playoff teams are playing more matches on average. Um, you know, I think this is more LCS for fans of LCS. For the pro player on just like a week-to-week a -week grind, and especially over the course of the year, I don't think this is like a meaningful increase. And again, when we were sort of back-channeling and ideating with uh, with Darshan and players and, you know, people in-house, everybody was pretty excited about these changes. Uh, pros want a, a format that rewards the best teams and that has a lot of, you know, kind of competitive uh, focus and thrust into it. They're going to be happy with this because it has more of that in it. And do like, you practice is fine, but they like playing games, you know, like you, you lift all those weights so that you can get out on the field and actually play the games. And, and as a team owner, I mean, how are you guys approaching that opening tournament? Right. Because generally speaking, uh, you know, tournaments require, I think, a little bit more attention and grinding and that kind of thing. I don't know if you guys have already started scrimming, if teams are starting to scrim, if if there's a lot of pressure to make sure that the teams are ready for that or if the, the tournament is lighthearted or designed in a way that like it almost serves as a bit of a practice and opening for the split. Like how, how, how seriously will, will teams be expected to, to take that? Yeah, I'll give you what I pitched. I'm mean, actually Greeley and I haven't talked about this since the, this specific format came out. When, it, when we were sort of pitching a kickoff tournament, it was to have something that felt slightly lower stakes than the regular season, but had enough stakes that teams would try hard enough. Um, and I feel like we kind of dialed that in for year one, but I, I, you know, that was before we had a specific format that like, this is the format of this tournament. Um, it's supposed to be at the beginning. I think things should feel a little rough and preseason-y still, um, but uh, but it should be something that you you really are putting your best foot forward. So uh, I you know I think all the teams are going to try. I mean I I don't know I, we're going to be we're going to try. Um, and definitely if you want reps for your team over like you know one thing coaches talk a lot about is they want stage games, they want reps, they want reps, and you want reps in best of series. Uh, the better you do in this format, and I think in general the formats we're going to put in there, the more reps you're going to get, and that's what by the end of the year that's what you want a lot of yeah i can say uh, on the broadcast if golden guardians doesn't come out immediately and slam that tournament i will uh equate that to their entire performance level um for the for the rest of the year i mean you that's you fair them, you put them 10th last year i expect you to put them 10th again uh mark i know, I they, know you said you were going to put your power rankings on my youtube channel i'm very excited they, they've been they've been penciling at 10th since uh before they even announced their roster okay i gotcha gotcha <laughs> And we've uh, been penciled in 10th all four years so far. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, Kevin, for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, is it okay if I ask another question really quick? If, if you make it real quick, because we do have yeah, one more this, person and I don't want um, to. This may be a naive question to ask, but um, do, do you think players will ever get bored of playing too many games? Uh, I think players like games. Um I think they get tired of losing, but other than that, no, I don't think they get tired of playing. Uh, like practice is definitely like a, another scrim day. Nobody wants another scrim day. They'd much rather take a game day. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll ask a question really quick uh, while uh, Mark is getting our final caller, because I don't think it's popped up yet, unless it is our final caller, in which case I'm going to feel really bad. But uh, one of the criticisms I did see when the uh, announcement was was put out was like, all right, you guys play 45 games, I think, right, over the course of the regular season. And then you still – all all it does at the end is sort of determine seeding and eliminate two teams from playoffs. Like you still have 80% of the league entering playoffs from all those games. So um, why, why sort of design it that way? Why not make it a little bit more strict? I guess there's, there's two things from, uh, from my perspective at least. One is that uh, you still have MSI. Uh, as a checkpoint. So we're still going to have spring finals, um, still going to have the mid-season showdown. I think uh, I think that's what it's called now. 
um, which is an opportunity, you know, we're still going to pull six teams in there. There's still going to be a prize pool, a trophy lift. You're still, you know, you're going to go represent the region uh, for MSI. When you get to the end of summer, um, we looked at a lot of different scenarios. Uh, you know, we looked at the team that, you know, couldn't, couldn't pull it together in spring, had a really bad spring split, uh, and then, you know, kind of found their footing in summer and, you know, how would they make playoffs? What would things look like? Um, we also did a, we looked at, you know, essentially if we use this format in prior years, understanding that it's never quite apples to apples, right? Teams may react differently when, when stakes are slightly different. Um, it didn't have huge impacts on the teams that would ultimately qualify in uh, for playoffs, having, having the full season piece. Uh, but when we're able to connect it, we think we'll get better kind of full season storylines. We think we'll get, um, you know, kind of more opportunities for teams like Hunters last year, where I don't think, you know, anyone expected them. I mean, I did personally because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a genius, but I don't think there were a lot of folks out there who expected them to, to have the great performance they did in the playoffs last year and uh, kind of create this great run that they had. Um, I think you're going to see that. And then look, at the end of the day, if the seventh and eighth teams come in and they get blasted in the, the first weekend, then like, you know, you, we've got two series and, and we kind of move on uh, into the rest. I, I think it, uh, provides opportunities for teams uh, to take some risks during the season. Uh, I think it helps us balance summer against spring split. Uh, and, you know, one of the goals we have when we come in to develop formats is making sure that we're sending the best teams that we can to international competition. So when you have a, a situation uh, in summer where you could have a team that clicked or came on late or picked up somebody or moved somebody up from the from their academy team and everything fell together, uh, you do want to give them that chance to try to play through to playing out of the seventh or eighth spot in the summer playoffs is not easy. Uh, you know, finding your trip to finals from there is extremely difficult. But, uh, you know, when you eliminate the gauntlet, you try to pull a couple of things together. It made the most sense to us. Um, and as the caller before noted, you know, when we move up to 12 teams, it'll feel perfect. Yeah. Emily is here. Emily uh, from ESPN. Oh, yeah. Where are you calling um, from? Oh, yeah, I guess I technically am still at ESPN. I'm um, yeah. calling from Culver City, California. Culver, nice. Culver City, California. Hope you're hope you're hanging in there. Um, we're we are all are big fans of your work and excited to see what happens next year. Uh, what yeah, do you see. what do you want to talk about on the show? So this is basically me interviewing Greeley, but without actually being able to publish anything. So I figured I'd come on and and grill him. But for Not legal really. reasons, um, she's a caller calling into a show. Yeah, exactly. I'm no one. I'm absolutely no one. Um, so previously when I'd spoken to you about um, all the format changes that happened last year, first at the beginning of the season and then again in mid-season, um, you brought up two main points in terms of expanding viewership because League was already the third most popular sport by viewership uh in in the u.s uh according to you um uh, or according to other people too but like i'm citing you told me yeah. Emily's here just man, come to on. dunk on our guests <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay Greeley knows me uh, and then um and another thing i'd heard is that riot was like really iffy about considering tournaments as part of like a regular season format so to speak um so i kind of wanted to ask you about uh what made you change like if that if that was true then what made you change your mind regarding including something like the lcs lock-in um which is a tournament uh kind of piggybacking into like league format i'm a big fan personally because i actually really like tournament formats better than league formats but in a franchise league, I can see why you wouldn't be doing tournaments constantly. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure, um, you know, where the you know, Riot Hates Tournaments um, idea came from, or who gave that to you, I don't I don't think it was me, uh, but I, I can't Thank remember. You. No, it wasn't you. I, I can't remember <laughs> things I said yesterday. According to you, Riot Hates yeah. Tournaments. According, to, according <laughs> to LCS, Chris Crilly. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, we don't, look, we don't hate tournaments. We like compelling formats. Um, this, you know, like I, like I said earlier, we spent, you know, the last probably two or three years kicking around different iterations of what a season kickoff tournament could look like. Uh, I think the time was, was ripe for it. Um, you know, just like the time was ripe for us to move to an expanded schedule. Like moving last year, we went from two broadcast days to three broadcast days. Uh, we kind of got it figured out on our side. We got our feet wet with it. And it allowed us to expand that third broadcast day this year uh, to include more games right, so that we go with an expanded schedule. Uh, I think the 
that expanded schedule allowed us to get in a, a full you know 90 game split uh, in spring and still have the opportunity to play uh, play the tournament. Um, we think it's going to be great, but um, yeah, I mean you, you know you don't you don't know until you play the games. But um, you know, look, my hope is that uh, pro players are going to take it seriously. You know, hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar winner take all prize pool. Um, you know, while it may pale in comparison to some of the buyout fees we've seen, it's still like a nice twenty-five, thirty thousand uh, dollar payday for three weeks of work. Um, that you know, I think will be interesting uh, for pros uh, and will be interesting to take home. I also love the fact that it's winner take all, uh, so it does give you an incentive to push through. It's not spread over the top four places like we do uh, for the normal LCS season. Um, it'll be it'll be yeah. convenient for Sorter to be able to uh, pay his accountant to manage the rest of his money <laughs> that he gets yeah, yeah, yeah. for his. TSM contract yeah. if he wins that. Right. Yeah, the only the only thing I'll add is that um, you know this tournament was in the deck that that we submitted three years ago when we were first talking about format changes, and I think to get to a place where you could say like okay, let's adjust the schedule to make room, we needed to show that condensing down to three days was something that would be good for the league overall and sort of and buoy the health of viewership, and there were some concerns around that coming out of my uh, disastrous, you know, best of three format change that we did um, and the feelings and riot around stretching to three days and the dual streams and other things. So there was a, in a lot of ways, we like, you know, kind of reset and then rebuilt confidence in a three-day schedule. And that that really gave us the room to run this kickoff schedule. So I've been hammering Greeley on this for for three years. It, it took us a, a little while to, to like have the logical steps in place to, to take the jump on this. And why, uh, by the way, I was going to ask about this, right? I, Riot may not hate tournaments, but I do feel like Riot hates talking about prize pools. And so I was very surprised whenever I saw that the prize pool stuff was included as a like a prominent mention in this. Normally, it's just sort of like in the rule book somewhere somebody gets some cash for something. So what was the motivation behind that? And were there discussions internally as you're seeing like the reports around salaries for some of these players where it's like, should we even... Is this even something that we need or to talk about or something? Um, you know, generally we're not, we don't lead with prize pool. Um, you know, we have salaries, pro player salaries that are higher than I think every other esport out there. Um, so it's it's not something we try to index highly on. Like we don't go after Dota 2 and they're, and they're like $30 million. Did, was it, did you have a little bit of a, a physical reaction to saying that name of the- Yeah, I did, I did. I had to clear my throat and figured it was- Dota <laughs> 2? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that, that, that's just not what we want to be the draw, right? We never want people to talk about Worlds uh, because it has a huge prize pool. We wanted to talk about it because it's the biggest event in esports. Um, for the, for the lock-in tournament, you know, I think when people looked at it and said, what's the point of this, right? It doesn't, it has minimal competitive impact. It's the beginning of the year. You're not solidifying your spot to MSI or Worlds uh, by playing in it. Uh, why would anyone care? Uh, we, we wanted to give folks a reason to care. Uh, it's not like you're winning a million dollars for the three weeks, but it's still a sizable amount of money. In addition to the 150K, uh, there is also a $50,000 charitable piece to it that will direct towards the charity of the, the winning team's choice. So um, again, not not the most riot thing that we've done uh, around our, our format changes, but uh, definitely served a purpose for us. Yeah. Very good. Any other quick questions, Emily? I know that we're a little over time for these guys, but if you have anything. Yeah, I have, I have one like really quick one, and it's that um, I know Hunter had touched upon this in the previous caller's question, but um, trying to find the balance between serious and fun, like just your complete opinions how bad do you think the hot takes are going to be after week one because i see even so many of the the western reactions to like lpl teams playing really fast and loose in their best of threes even though their season is so long and there's like actually plenty of room for them to play around so i'm wondering if you think it's going to be like even worse with the tournament at the at the forefront of the season yeah i think um I think the onus really is on Mark and the desk and the Riot broadcast to set the tone right out of the gate. And I mentioned this when I was on the last time, but this this year with Pearson and Doublelift retiring with other things like the 
the broadcast has to step up and tell stories in a different way and frame this new season and other things. Um, so I, I expect to, you know, Reddit's going to do what it does. But I do think um, the league and the official broadcast can have a big say in how people kind of react to all this stuff by the framing and the stories that that they're telling. Hi, Kobe. How are you? Hi. He's what is, what do we got here? here? Yeah. Great this, job, guys. This five Kobe, guys? Kobe says or, great uh, job. Uh, it's in and out. Uh, me. In and out. So, you know, I, and I don't know, Chris, I'm, I'm not sure how much you guys have, if you want to tip tip your hand on on uh, storytelling at all as you guys are approaching this, or Mark, I don't know if you guys are having any meetings about this at all yet. But but that, that's my answer to you, Emily. Is I think it'll be bad, of course, That but that's like hot take culture is what it is. But I do think the broadcast um, can shape this uh, significantly, depending on how what approach they take. And we, we want the hot takes, right? If people aren't talking about it, then, then why are we doing it? Um, what so about I, the I think hot that... are LCS sucks now. Why did Doublelift and Bjerg retire? Who are these well, think... guys? That's <laughs> that's think... like the problem, right? I think really mean it's more the hot takes around the results of the tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not who's gotcha. the idiot boomer running the league. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. I remember. That was a that's a reference. Anyway, um <laughs> <laughs> I think um I mean to to Hunter's point, I know people are talking about some of this stuff internally about presenting the format changes and like, you know, even including what's the spring split, uh, you know, thing is called and, and how it's it's going to be presented. Like, I know those conversations going on as an independent contractor. I, I technically don't uh, sit too close to those kinds of things, but I, I, I've had a couple meetings about them. So I, I think people are, you know, conscious of, of making sure to tell new stories that match not only the new LCS um, on a player and narrative level, but also on a format level and also on a broadcast level. I don't think, um, I think there's a lot of things to do different. Pretty good. I'll well, also hey. take that under advisement as someone who has some semblance of control in terms of how narratives work. Flame away, Emily. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily, for the call. <laughs> Anything you want to shout out? Uh, no, not really. I'm, I'm never prepared for this. Uh, people can, can find people me hire at, you? League of, at League of Emily on Twitter right now. That's the only place that I am. Uh, and you can message me there. And I'm accepting, yeah, like, if you have an offer for me. 2021 you opportunities. You can come work for you. Yeah. yeah. Trav <laughs> Travis Gap I'm Industries. looking for jobs. <laughs> Emily, Emily she's the... great. She's great. Emily, Someone hire her. Emily is awesome. Yep. Emily, what would you think of the uh, changes to Academy and Amateur? I love it, actually. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm actually so sad that I was not able to cover Scouting Grounds this year. I was, like, all prepared. And then they were like, you can't. And I was like, ah, no, my favorite event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, so yeah. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they shake out. And I just, I hope teams um, really try to continue to help bridge that kind of gap that we have in, in infrastructure. So um, I'm excited to see where it goes. I just want to say whenever, whenever Verizon uh, laid everybody off, Hunter and I did a great job of making sure that you were fired right away, um, that there was none of this hanging out while the Top website the was dying thing. So uh, <laughs> that was... Yeah, just just remember the favor that uh, we all did. Um, anyway, thank you so much, Emily. Uh, yeah, and, thank uh, you for having me. Excited to see what happens whenever you uh, land wherever you head next, and maybe hopefully you and I can collab on some stuff. It'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that is our last caller of this part of the show. We're gonna let Hunter and Greeley, who are both family men, uh, go off and sleep or spend time with their family or whatever it is they do. Um, whenever you have children um anyway i will let you guys go thanks so much for coming on any shout outs or anything you guys want to say before we, we uh let you go uh i i want to say thank you to Greeley and all of riot for you know getting way more feedback than they want from gold guardians on virtually every topic that touches the league in one form or another and you know the format process in general year over year um it gets the format gets better and better the process gets better and better and uh you know we really do feel welcome to bring all of our crazy ideas and slowly but surely we're getting them all in very good. Are we? Is there a particularly crazy idea that you you've tried to put in, but you can talk about, and it won't 
cause trouble or, or is all your wackiest ideas still under lock and key? Mm, I, I don't think I would tip my hand on anything yet because I think that would put odd pressure on Greeley to incorporate it. And mm. I'd rather let our, our spitballing, you know, spitball in, in relative obscurity. <laughs> your academy is Jonathan in the chat. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, he can gulag. type whatever he wants. They keep That's saying not what gulag I gulag over and over again. Yeah, yeah, John does have a, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, and Yut, who is a uh, member of the broadcast of the Leafs, says 1v1 for tiebreakers. Yeah, that's a terrible idea. We've uh, talked about that. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. Things. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's why we're not doing it, but we certainly <laughs> talked about it a lot. We think it would have been really fun for the first, like, week or two, but when you hit week six of, of tiebreakers, uh, where you got to play a bunch of 1v1s on broadcast, probably not so much. Um, I'd like to thank Travis and Mark for having me on the show. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, and for Hunter for agreeing to appear beside me, which I know is... Uh, damaging for him would have to look at my face next to his face. I'm sensing so much animosity uh, here. <laughs> um, and of <laughs> what course, was that, uh, laugh? that was that was concerning. Anyway, sorry, continue. <laughs> uh, and then shout out all the teams. Uh, you know, Golden Guardians chief amongst them for for helping us get here uh, on format. But it's a uh, you know takes a village. So we went to a lot of teams, took a lot of feedback, uh, worked through a lot of format issues, uh, took a lot of ideas. So. Uh, I tell the owners when we when we dial in for that call every year that it's my favorite call of the year. Um, it's not me being facetious. It is uh, my favorite kind of brainstorming activity with all the teams as we talk through our goals for for format, the things we're trying to get out of it, um, look at our results from last year, the things that worked, the things that didn't work, and you know can kind of hear everyone's crazy ideas about what could work uh, in the future. So, uh, really excited for. LCS 2021. Uh, I'm ready for it to get started. I'm, I'm tired of kind of sitting around watching other stuff, waiting for it. So, uh, by the way, I one can't fast enough. one quick question that I knew I would I would ask because I've seen a ton. I already know the answer to this, but like, we are there's nobody in the studio next next year, right? Cases skyrocketing. Um, currently, no plans to have anyone in the studio. I think for at least the lock in tournament, uh, okay. we'll see if we can get. Um, some of our talent uh, into the the studio after that, if we can do it in a way that's safe. Um, obviously, there's you know cool. no no reason to move off remote if we can't keep people safe. I'll buy a hazmat suit. There you go. That'd be great. Well, you should I'm buy a hazmat suit. Know. Wear it in your apartment. I'm gonna let you guys know. Go. Sorry, I know that we're way over time. Thank you so much, Hunter and Greeley, and we'll catch you next time. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Yep. See it. Okay, let's see how quickly I can I can fix the layout and get us going back in. How are you How are you doing, Mark? How's your reaction to all this stuff now that they are uh, now that they are gone? Oh, why did oh. you leave, Travis? Oh, that was a mistake. I was trying to disconnect from the <laughs> Skype call, or disconnect Greeley from the Skype call. <laughs> all right, um, I'm kicking Greeley. I did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you left. I was like, and the other two were still here. Still, I was like, what he's the still fuck in the Skype happened? call. How can we remove, remove from call? There we go. Okay. I was going to say, we can just start a new one without him. No, no, we're good. Um, Mark, how are you doing? And what now that they're gone, what were your reactions to to this? We could have done this earlier, but I know we just got straight into this top stuff. So, like, what, uh, what was your reaction to this whenever you saw the format changes? Well, I mean, you basically shared all of them for the most part um previously and i had spoken to my bosses about the new format a little bit for some of the things that you i think might have not been positive on like the the spring split still having a tournament you know yeah uh, i don't know i like the idea of spring split having a tournament i just wasn't sure about yeah um, i just mean like you know last week when we were oh, talking I wasn't about sure it, what the yeah stakes were and all that yeah, stuff, yeah 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 i was i was already in, in like a little bit in the know on that so i had to be careful <laughs> then saying what i yeah. said uh but but yeah i i'm more or less I think the changes are all good. Um, you know, I, I'm curious to see what comes of the the spring kickoff tournament. It feels like the biggest like X factor to me. Otherwise, it doesn't feel well. There is actually the carryover of games between spring and summer. I think is actually the most important thing that people aren't talking about. There's um, not even a spring and summer. That's what I feel like they scammed me. Spring split is not a thing. You're, we're splitting nothing. Well, right. I mean, like there's a mid season tournament is the way to call it. It's not spring and summer. It's it's you know, and it's not even first half, second half, because technically the the first half there's, is the only yeah. double round robin with an extra tournament tack 
onto the end. Right. Uh, but, uh, but I do think calling it up, spring LS? and summer <laughs> is going to be slightly confusing because, oh, LS is in the chat. Um, I'm happy to hear about the health stuff that happened in your life recently, LS, that um, things are, are looking up for, for a woman, I believe is her name. Either way, um, I, I just think it's interesting because I do wonder if calling it spring split and summer split will make people not realize for a while that like the games and the records and everything continue. So it's, on. it's, it's not, I'm pretty sure. I, so this is, I don't want to speak out of turn. So don't take this as like, I know for sure, because I admittedly don't know for sure, but I, I don't know if it's going to be branded still spring and summer. Um, like I said, I think the, the spring, the, the thing that was previously would be a spring tournament is now the mid season. They are calling it spring, spring. I can tell you cause I got, I got briefed on it. And I mean, that's what oh, they okay. called it just now on the, on the show. So yeah, I didn't know if yeah. that was like a, you know, colloquial spring sure. um but, sherman sherman in the chat who works at riot is saying the calendar is split into two parts of spring and summer but and i that is true i just think that uh that's that's a, that's an easy justification for trying to keep the sp spring split summer split because nothing about the nature of spring and summer splits are are continuing on right, anyway like format structure wise they're pretty similar but the fact that they're linked is is a huge part and like i, I was saying that's the biggest thing I'm, I'm most concerned about is um what kind of effect having a team starting summer as 10th place with a potentially an abysmal record or a first place team like if, if tl or c9 just fucking slams coming in with like a six game lead in, in spring or summer already you know like maybe that changes and we have these really cool periods of time and all this stuff but that's uh that i think is is the the thing that concerns me most where there's a lot of other parts of them hype. I really like the changes that they made to the actual tournaments too, about like making sure that people can't or, or trying to make sure people don't repeat matchups like what happened with golden guardians and TSM again. Yeah. Um, those kinds of things are, are all really good changes. Yep. Anyway, uh, let's open up the lines for calls, right? They don't have to necessarily be format. Maybe they can be about any number of different things, but if they are about yeah. format, maybe people feel, what is, what is very true is like like there was somebody that was yelling at or t telling Hunter he didn't have a brain on uh, the subreddit today. These people never actually call into the show, um, but it does demonstrate to me that I think some people might be willing to call in now well, that they're not here. So, we'll so wait, where did the guy go? Is this the right guy? Did you? There find was somebody? someone who there was someone who did not like the changes, but I don't know what happened. We should have had them on whenever they did. They not want to come on when we had them on. Um, they they posted before, but like just depending on how people are structuring their takes, it's the kind of thing where like I'm not sure they'll have the you know nuance slash respect that I would want. But yeah. I don't think their take is inherently wrong or anything. You know, like sometimes there's just how people word things that I might stay away from the guests on a more contentious topic, By or it's way, more uh, like a, or it's an opinion more than it is like a hey, what do you think about this? And I'm I want the opinion, but not when yeah. we have questions for the people. Twitch chat, did anything else happen in this past week? I feel like nothing happened this last week. Thank God the format stuff happened because otherwise we'd have nothing to talk about. To Greeley's point, um, people on Twitch chat usually give me an idea, but like I don't know. I've been paying attention and uh, haven't seen anything. Oh, one thing I can tease right now. I will tease right now. Oh, we I can do the Alienware break soon, but um, I am this week doing a Bjergsen retirement interview uh, that'll be recorded, and you guys will be able to check it out. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think that'll be good. That's content you guys. It'll probably release early next week. Um, I'll probably do a stream, like a stream debut, so everybody can watch it together. Hopefully, it'll be fairly long. Um, we we have I have an hour with them, so we'll see. I don't know if it's gonna be an hour, but yeah, I'm happy about it. Yeah, I don't know when the Reggie interview is. I've DM'd him multiple times right. and I haven't heard back. This is this is a bit of a YOLO. Um, um Ghost's microphone is not it, it might be a little sketch, but it seemed fine when I was in the waiting room with him. I'm nervous. Ghost, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Argentina. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, so basically my take, oh, well, I mean, I guess this will work more if Greeley was still here, but my take kind of is that the format changes or LCS won't do a whole lot because spring still pretty much doesn't matter except for deciding which team goes to MSI. There's not really many stakes and summer is still the more, the more important 
uh, tournament, I guess. But everyone seems to like the the changes. Like so more than just saying the take, I wanted to be converted into the 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 format. Okay, I'm I'm excited to hear the comparison. I already take issue with a couple of things, but go ahead. Uh, I mean. Call yeah, I mean, oh. it's Spring is still mostly for MSI, no? Well, Spring is for MSI, but all those games count as much as the summer games do, because they don't... Uh, uh, for regular season, right? Yeah, so like if you, for instance, if you go undefeated um, uh -huh. and another team loses most of their games, you are entering summer with a huge advantage, uh, like a huge game lead for playoffs, right? Uh, yeah, but that's exactly that, that. That's my point, actually. That it's for regular season, and there's eight teams going to playoffs in summer. So, getting more games in spring for playoffs in summer doesn't really matter because unless you're really shit, you're gonna make it to, to playoffs, <laughs> right? Or yeah, or am I missing something? No, so you're, your take you're right. is no longer that spring split doesn't matter. It's that spring split and summer split doesn't matter. The regular uh, season I mean, itself. Regular doesn't... seasons are a bit. Yeah, we are. I mean, so the the rewards for regular season range from if you are in first or second, is it that you only need to win a single best of five to make worlds? Uh, is that I correct, so. Travis? Yes. Right. And then for teams who are like seventh, eighth, you're having to make like essentially what would have been a gauntlet run back in the past. And you also have an extra life if you're in one, two, or maybe it's in top four. Well, let me, let me look up the, the format again, or Travis can put it on screen. If he's not too busy jamming fries down his, his, his face. <sighs> I want to be clear here. Kobe, <laughs> who I love and was willing to get me this food, did imply he would be getting me this food earlier. And then he got in a wow, heroic raid. And I was informed that he, this would be anyway. Um, I don't have the video right in front of me right now. I'll try to, to load up the, the page while you I think it's I think it's on the page. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna go into the Reddit yeah. thread. I'm going to it now. So I, I wanna be point. I wanna be sure about um the the format. Sure. Oh Oops. I have to log in. Oh my god, why do I have to fucking log in? All right, I'll just watch on I'm, stream. I'm, yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Uh that's the mid season one. This is the championship one. Here you go. I've got it on screen. Right. Here. So so first and second seed only have to win a single best of five to to make worlds basically yes they only have to they, they have to win a single best of five to make worlds um fourth through or third through six have to win two or more um and the other people and they have but they have an extra life and then seventh and eighth uh don't matter so in, in to the caller's point i can understand the idea that playing 45 games to seed this tournament as well as the spring one, but, but mostly this tournament in terms of figuring out who goes to worlds um, is a lot of games to get to this. I can understand that argument. I can understand that too. If I, if I could frame it another way, I think the, the changes are supposed to be for the teams to be more competitive internationally, right? As far as I understand it. Uh, or maybe that's not the case. I mean, I think it's multiple. I think they feel like this is also a better viewership experience because you get more games. Uh, I don't think I want to watch uh, Dignitas play in playoffs. But, yeah. Uh, but you don't have to watch Dignitas play in playoffs. Yeah, I, just not watch that game, I don't right? think many people want that. That's what I mean. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I, I don't think playing m more games of regular season that are still just best of ones makes the teams better right what but if like, i told you these are all best of fives just split across an entire year <laughs> i mean that, <laughs> i don't uh, think that's the same skill set that you're training <laughs> i can't get behind I mean, that yeah point. i mean if if i framed it that way right it's a whole lot of best of fives over a whole season that would be pretty cool but i don't think that's the case i also I don't think the, the framing even, even i'm not lines too up. hot on the, on the format still so, so here's here's where I'll agree. I can understand that 54 games or 45 games, excuse me, getting to that point does feel like a lot. In terms of being better for a competitive environment, I would say 
like Travis was saying, each there's a lot of changes and not all of them are furthering the same point. So like having more games done faster and on three days a week could be a better viewership experience for people. But that's not the part that's improving. Um, you know, the region, that's the kickoff tournament at the beginning where you're playing best of threes and best of fives right out the gate to try and figure things out and have more time to experiment. Um, and then you're you're still playing the same number of best of one, actually even more best of ones uh, on stage right. and you're losing a scrim day, which, you know, Hunter already talked about the, the different pros and cons there. So I think there is an angle that it's better for um, pro players in ter- if, if they want to be, you know, the best that they can be. I, th- I think there's a world that this is better. The other thing I'll say is I still just don't agree with the idea that like, MSI doesn't matter. This is one of the, the uh, sentiments. I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you didn't say it, but it seems to be implied when you're talking about games in spring don't matter when they lead to one of the only two international events that happen. Uh, so, like, this is one of the things when people say, oh, the regular season doesn't matter. It's like, well, it leads not only to the summer games, but it also leads to the spring uh, uh, tournament. So, like, <clears throat> if the point is that that doesn't matter in your mind, I would be I would ask why. And if you think it does matter, well, then clearly those regular season games are do, do matter for that. Yeah, I mean, most I guess I framed it poorly, but my point was that it won't it won't really affect how LCS teams perform at MSI and Worlds necessarily just by changing the format like this. Um, I. I Here's the I'm thing. not convinced I, that a format change is how we fix our problems. Yeah, that's uh, what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I agree with you. A format change w- doesn't and will never fix NA. We have I just played best uh, of threes, and we fucking performed some of the worst we've ever performed with best of threes. It doesn't... like The, the problems that we face are largely inconsequential to the, the format that we have. Korea doesn't have a great format when you look at it. EU has largely had the same or worse format than us for for the majority of their time, and they they crush us. So like I don't look at Riot's formats to be the 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 fix or one of the fixes that that we need. Um, you know, like Korea gets more best of threes, but their playoff formats donkey. You know, like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that you can cr- criticize about each league's format. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So guess, I'm with okay, you. So what would you what would you like to have seen, Ghost? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think just copying the LEC format works. I don't think there's a need to make 45 regular season games in summer because NA players are already burnt out by world's time. So, like, adding more games. Just, I just don't think it would be I, worse. I, I kind of agree with with Hunter and Greeley's take that we're not going to be burning our pros out this way. I don't think that the more games are actually going to be it. I played a bit of a devil's advocate, but like, yeah. I, I think if, if pro players were pretty upset about this, we'd already be hearing from them about it. There'd already be like random, you know, like a Twitch clip on the front page of the thing that's like C9 Fudge reacts to <laughs> the format change and it's him being like this is a big cack w um so i i think i think that players are not going to have a big issue with it honestly honestly i would bet this is travis gaffer prediction time okay i've don't, i don't know if i've done a like more than one year out of uh, prediction but i would bet it's very likely that lec copies our format on this i think they're gonna i think they will move to a similar thing where there are Three game, f- three full game days, and all that stuff. I bet you that ends up happening. Demonte, you're in Twitch chat. Are you pissed about? Do you think this is going to lead to more work or like more burnout for you guys? I mean, we have we have pros in Twitch chat. May as well use these. <laughs> Honestly, the cool thing is, is that now there will be so that there's three full days. There are two nights in which you can go out and party and get drunk before games, or maybe three. I don't know. They used to only do three. it on Saturday, so now they can do it Friday night and Saturday night. Um, after that, uh, I mean, like the the schedule for pros. If if, if the caller uh, doesn't know, generally what it is is Tuesday through Sunday you work, and Monday is supposed to be your off day, but it's usually filled with solo queue and sponsorship obligations. Um, this doesn't change that. Like Hunter was saying, it removes a scrim day on Friday and turns it into a game day. Uh, but those are, like he was saying, actually usually less 
busy than than scrim days because scrim days are usually um, uh, two to three blocks of best of series that you're playing over the course of that day. Whereas this is like you show up to the studio two or three hours beforehand, you dick around until you go on and stage, and you play your games, then you go home, and it's like three hours of work, four hours of work maybe, um, maybe a little bit more if you're if you're doing pick band for the next day as well. Uh, but you know, like it's it's relatively easier than scrim days. Papa Smithy said teams will experiment with night scrims on Friday and Saturday, I would guess. That's not good then. I mean, if I that's mean, the case, then that kind of ruins the argument that game days are less work. Well, it depends because some people are already triple blocking. You know, people triple block on and off throughout the year anyways. So it, it could, I'm not saying it's not, but people have done night blocks. I don't know. We'll have to see. 100T confirmed getting burned out before Worlds. Uh, Ghost, <laughs> thank you so much for the call. Um, yeah. I agree with you that the format stuff is not going to fix fix us for worlds, but I am I am less skeptical about it than you are. I don't know. I'm going to be completely honest. I actually don't know how I feel yet about the eight teams going into playoffs. It does feel weird. Sometimes things that feel weird are actually still a good situation, but it does it does feel strange. I I mean yeah I'm I also also agree with that a little bit that like you know. The seventh, eighth teams are probably bad, <laughs> and I don't need to watch a series of them. But if there's some, w the one thing I'll say actually, I didn't like it last year when we had summer to decide this. But there, it's possible that a team sucked in spring and improved in summer and clinched their way in in seventh and eighth, which is something that wouldn't have happened last year. Usually, if a team was bad enough to be seventh, eighth through nine weeks and eighteen games, they're probably just not a good team. But if a team makes improvements or whatever, this this expanded system does give them a chance to rally in. And I hope we see that because otherwise, yeah, you're having a boring 7-8 and you watch them play one best of five, get knocked down. We all go, great, let's get on with the teams that have a chance. Ghost, thank you so much for the call. And uh you have any quick shout outs? Uh, okay, well, to just to leave real quick, uh, I actually agree with most of what you guys said. Uh, I actually kind of understand better. Like it was a problem of me misunderstanding the format, not necessarily anything else. Sure. And to shout out, I want to shout out FlyQuest for having an Argentinian player. I want to Jose Dedo. And yeah, that's it. Nice. nice. Are you going to watch LCS? Did you already watch LCS a ton last year? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, a bit. Uh, Are you yeah, now a FlyQuest fan out. because of Jose? Yes, absolutely. Nice. I'm I, excited. I don't have any other reason to watch LCS now. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you've got at least that. But hopefully they don't back <laughs> Anyway, thanks so much, Ghost. We'll catch you. Yeah. yeah. See you. Okay. On to the next caller. Actually, Mark. Oh, fuck. I was going to was gonna do an ad. Uh, I need to bring up Twitch chat. Remind me, please. Uh, Doogly Bear. Think of it three months. Bucks Cabaret. The Lone Dinosaur. Uh, the Elo Burger. Silverius and Nuclei gifted a sub as well. Uh, <clears throat> waiting on, waiting on, uh, our next caller. By the way, I hope everyone's being safe. It is, uh, like I know Christmas is coming up next week and I would just say, please be safe because, uh, there's, especially if you're in North America, the COVID stuff is really popping off. So just make sure you're making safe decisions. This is my plea to everybody. Um, it is uh, pretty spooky. Just go look at the data, especially if you're outside of the U.S. and you want to just just look up like California COVID um, cases. You'll get this crazy chart that. Uh, so before we get to the next caller, Travis, I, yeah. I pulled two callers who had opinions about who was going to win the kickoff event. Um, and I was thinking we've never done this before, but what if we had the two callers on to to argue? Are the and two callers the callers I think they are? Uh, well, one is the caller you think it is. The other one, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Blue Jay is not one of them. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, but I was I was going to save it for the end. I was going to do it for the end. No, let's let's do it separate just because I don't want one person. If it was Blue Jay and our other caller, then I would I would. They were like, down for it. I ran it by him. I ran it by him, and, and I'm gonna. The guy didn't sound like he was he was you know gonna fold. So I, <clears throat> and if we moderate, maybe it works. I don't know. It'd be fun, right? Okay, let's okay. have some we'll, fun. We'll try. It's we'll the try. off season. Like Hunter just said, is this not the time to experiment with the format of our show? 
Mark. Hey, what's up, Blue Jay? We've had 153 episodes. I don't want to <laughs> fuck this up, okay? This is the best thing. <laughs> this is the longest standing thing I've got going. It's, we do this a, one experiment and the show just it's implodes. A, it's a cash cow, okay? You don't you don't mess with cash cows because this baby, it's just printing money for me, okay? Callers call in, they go moo, and then the money shows up. Speaking of which, Blue Jay's here. Blue Jay, <laughs> remind me where you're calling from. You're calling from Ontario. Ontario. What do you want to talk about on the show? Yeah, so my take is that the new LCS format is not just good, it's actually great, but... I worry that the lock-in tournament will get a little bit stale as years go on. So even though I'm really hyped and really excited for it this year, I think it'll kind of get a little bit stale over time. And I want to discuss the idea of making the lock-in tournament a new and improved Rift Rivals. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Jesus. Blue Jay, <laughs> all these times you've called in and still you give me cakes like this. Anyway, go ahead. What's wrong with the take? Like okay, where do you I'll want me to start? Oh, you want me to start with why I like the... Where do you want me to start? Where pitch me? I am. Okay, I'm, so, give me your I, PowerPoint. I, yeah. So I think that well, there's lots of really good reasons why it's such a good format. One, I think all the games actually matter now, but that's pretty obvious. I I really also like how it's more weighted on the summer side versus the spring side. Um, I think it gives like more of a, a better representation of how good teams are at the time right before going into world. So I like that like sixty percent of the the games are in summer. I think that's really good. Um. As for the lock-in tournament, I feel like it will always be good for the players with like cash incentive. I think that's really cool. Um, but I think that there's not a lot of incentives for fans to get hyped uh, four or five years down the road. I think it'll get a little bit repetitive. Okay. Um, so one thing, and I, maybe you just missed it, but I think it was Hunter mentioned that it's something that they are probably going to keep experimenting with, what this tournament is, whether that means bringing in Academy um teams potentially they sound a little adverse to that idea but like it, if i'm hunter it sounds i do like not it's... want academy teams in this thing yeah i think he, i forget who was saying but someone said like you know you have to worry about how good they'll be if there's high turnover <laughs> yeah. rate from those kinds of teams um but it did sound like they were they were open to this tournament getting moved and changed quite a bit in the future yeah right. that i loved when he said that i think that he's exactly right i think that you do want something that's not going to be the same every year because it doesn't directly contribute to where teams will finish in the regular season or in playoffs or anything like that. So from a fan perspective, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but obviously there's the incentives for the players, right? Like cash incentive. I think that's pretty cool. And so I think, I don't know. I think if you do something new all the time, I think that's something like really excited and that's what's valuable to the fans. However, uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about maybe making it a new and improved Rift Rivals is because I think that's what makes it really exciting for the fans. Um, but you would obviously need a non-COVID year for that to happen. And you would also have to worry about jet lag like right before the season starts, right? So there's some backside to that. <clears throat> okay, so yeah. here's here's why you're wrong on a couple things. Um, okay. Me, here's why you're so just, fucking wrong. Let me just ex <laughs> let me, let me break this down for you, Mr. J. Um, one, the cash prize is a total red herring. I The cash prize is there because they need to, in my opinion... They need to trick fans because fans will claim this is like not worth it. They'll be like, what's the point? And so they know that just by sticking 150 grand on it, that pros or that fans won't say that. I really do not think the vast majority of these pro players who are getting paid a ton of money are, are going to care about it. I mean, it's a nice to have, but like that yeah. you're not going to see like sword art come out swinging against perks. Cause he's like, Oh God, got to get me a piece of that twenty-five k. You know, yeah, that's um, true. That's true. That only a single person's gonna like a single team will win. Yeah, yeah, it's it's winner takes all. So I mean, I what think about it's the fun. fifty thousand dollars towards a charity of their choice. Uh, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> that's nice, right? But like again, it's not um something that's gonna really affect their bottom line. So I just don't. I I think that's there to to stop anybody. It was probably put in there before Double Lift retired. Let's put it that way. Um, anyway, so they then, uh, in terms of the it getting stale, one to Mark's point, like, yeah, uh, Greeley and Hunter both said that they might change the stuff up in the future, but I actually think the kickoff tournament is perfect because the most honestly, the most exciting time in so many ways for the LCS is the off season because right after EU kicks us in the face and says all this stuff about us on Reddit, we pillage their coffers 
<laughs> and take all their talent and bring it over here. And we build these crazy teams that everyone gets really excited to see. And I think, like, sure, having the league stuff where you get to see people play every – that's fun. But seeing all these teams actually match up, seeing the shit show, and setting the narratives, like, it'll be – it'll make Mark – and the analyst desk job so much easier right after that tournament happens because they'll be able to say, wow, these guys really overperformed in the tournament. Are they going to be able to like do stuff? And then they only have six weeks to fill. So you no longer have the awkward like week six of the spring split where it's like, yep, this team's been shit for a while and they're going to continue. So I just think, uh, I think that it it's, is going to be always a way more exciting event for the the fans and the players because the players are going to be like oh we just started scrimming last week dog and like the patch is bad and what is who cares about this money like as long as that right can stop the pro players from saying that in interviews with me and trust me i'm pretty good at getting them to say stuff like that <laughs> um like why are you trying to kill the scene they're gonna be fine yeah let's just i'm trying to bring this baby down um um so I I don't we could talk about the rift rival stuff in a second but I I think you're you have the whole uh kickoff tournament the lock in thing um to a little bit inverted. I think it'll I mean like we don't have a preseason. We don't have preseason games in in the LCS which is something that a lot of traditional sports have and I'm hoping that this is able to have a vibe like that with even maybe a little bit more fun because there's a tournament format instead of just like six games each team plays before they play the games that matter because i do think state like not having a, a a preseason can be a little bit weird um so i appreciate that it's it's taking the place of three weeks that would be in the regular season anyway so it's not like it's contributing to extra work or it shouldn't be if if i understand it correctly which is another reason i don't dislike it um it doesn't matter technically towards worlds and stuff but i'm always of the opinion that like Winning in front of 150,000 to 400,000 people is always going to fucking matter. Um, you know, assuming that viewership is good for this tournament. You know, if Niles comes out and smacks or Perks does or maybe C9 comes out and lays a turd, like, all of these things matter. Maybe not towards exactly getting you to Worlds, but it'll be a contribution to the scene. I don't want them to gamify it. I don't want it to become... Uh, all-stars or some gimmicky thing with influencers and stuff i i, I don't mind those for all-stars because that's supposed to be just like a, hey we're done with the work we're, we're done with with the serious stuff um but i would also be concerned about if this turns to rift rivals because then like you're saying with the visa travel the fact that you're not going to bring 20 teams to this tournament so you're already cutting people out um because if you bring all 20 it's bigger than world to that point nearly yeah, it would be a huge ass tournament yeah right so then teams just aren't getting to play in this at the start and they stay home scrimming or like what's the solve for them I, I think there's a lot of hairy questions you get into when it becomes international though it would be i would love another international tournament i mean i don't want another international tournament after we get our ass beat at worlds because again <laughs> you have to think about this narratively off season is where we delude ourselves into thinking that we're gonna like we've solved our problems and so if it's like worlds oh we get be done aha we stole perks from them and then we just lose again like imagine G two just crushes C nine um, after out the gate after we've just gotten perks. It really takes away like the joy of of that, right? It, it even it, it, that's a great way to start it off. With, that's like, a, a kick defeatist in the attitude, Travis. What if we start going toe to toe with EU like we used to back in the glory days, and then it's you know fun. I would say the best chance NA has at beating EU would be when everyone's <laughs> kind of fresh, you know? <laughs> like teams aren't exactly solidified yet. Now's the time to strike, Travis. But then but then but then make, people do the same thing they did with too. Rift Rivals where they say, Oh, it doesn't you count. Just like like, them. Yeah, you 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 beat us on this stupid thing. Ha ha ha. Like I just don't think it's very practical. I do like the idea of international stuff. I'm sad. By by the way, shout out to my video. Um, cause I did a video last Friday that I really said, I don't think got very much traction, but like the Valorant riot has created an entirely different esports system for Valorant where there are four international events a year. It, it follows like the major type system. They still have worlds. It's actually really cool. I thought that league fans would be losing their shit because they used to always complain about how there's not enough international events. I released this and everyone just sort of like collectively sighed. I wasn't, and it, my, my thing was not to spark like some sort of 
riot against riot or something like that. It's just sort of like I think I think it's intellectually fascinating that this company created an entirely different system um, mm-hmm. than the one that they have for League. But I like I like the idea of seeing more international events in League. I think that would be fun. It would be expensive for me at TGI. I'd have to figure out how to deal with that, but it would be fun. And, Do you think uh, it would be like a little worrisome think... though if there was like four or five? Well, I don't know how many were there for Valorant. Like four or how many international tournaments would there be? Uh, there'd be four. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess my only concern, and I don't really know if it's a real concern, would be that like maybe Worlds wouldn't be as hype if we kind of know who's the favorites going in for sure. Like I think there's some uncertainty to Worlds. Because there are so few uh, international tournaments, like before Worlds happens, that would be only my real, like, small concern. But even still, I think more international tournaments would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's solves for that in the Valorant. I don't think people are going to be going into the Valorant Worlds being like, well, this is already decided. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry that I thrashed you, Blue Jay. I don't know if Mark's no, that's okay for you, but... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I mean, I call in because I like giving my thoughts. So, I mean, how can I fault you guys for giving yours? Uh, Mark, you can thrash if you have to, man. It's all good. Mark, do you have any uh, any thoughts? I no? gave my thoughts. Okay, I didn't know if you had anything. Anyway, thanks so much, Blue Jay. Um, I hope everyone knows that I'm just trolling. You've been on enough that I know that I can I can mess with you in a way that I need to coddle some of our other callers. Yeah, I, I won't I won't lose any sleep over it. I promise. <laughs> all right, catch you later. Have a good one. Yeah, hey, let me shout out my boy, though. My boy JNT is about to go head-to-head with my mood. We got a huge debate coming up, boys. Get some We got light. one more thank, caller before thank, then. Thanks don't, for don't using go. your shout-out to spoil the rest of our programming, Blue Jay. This is why I try <laughs> not to offer Mark you. Already, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, stuff. I'm out of here. I need to take a quick break. Wait, Mark. Mark, Uh-oh. I need to do the ad. Well, do the ad. Okay, go. All right. Everyone, it is time. For the moment that you've been waiting for, the Alienware shout out. That's right, everybody. We're doing a quick Alienware break to talk about them. They are fantastic. They make a cra- crazy great stuff. I uh, I actually did earlier this week. Um, actually, I guess it was last week. I did a stream where I got to play Cyberpunk 2077. That thing runs wonderfully on my 3090. I know, I know, I know. It struggled a bit on consoles, but I was really excited to run it on the 3090. And I was playing it on a, an ultra wide uh, monitor, which is the one that I use right now. And I got to say, by the way, if you have not played a game like that on an ultra wide, I felt like, and I saw uh, Becca um, from uh, Misfits tweeting about this too. That game on an ultra wide monitor is just insane. It is, as the kids say, poggers. Um, I just really, really enjoyed it. It was beautiful. The ray tracing and everything going, it was great. And so, it, I don't know. I just. Highly recommend if you're in the market to uh, to look for something like this, go take a look at the ultra wides. They are they are wonderful, and um, and yeah, I really appreciate them and Nvidia with the uh, 3090 that I've got. It's it's quite nice. Somebody, oh Kyle's gifted a sub to Captain Flowers. I, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. 851 gifted subs, Jesus. Anyway, oh wait, Flowers is in the chat. That's why he got gifted one. Travis, why don't you have a Christmas tree? I'll set it up. I'll set it up while Mark is pulling the next caller in. Mark, can you fill? For me, while I yeah. turn this on. Uh, the next call is here. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes, did, I did told you, you to... uh, We got TL the monk joining us. TL the monk, tell me where you're calling from. Uh, I'm calling from Denmark. Nice. What time is it there? Uh, ten uh, six fifty a.m. <laughs> God, and I haven't been... slept yet. <laughs> nice. Well, let's get your your topic before you pass out on us. What was it you're calling in for? Uh, my take is that teams like C9, who needs more time compared to teams like TL to play well and gel as a team, will suffer in the summer split due to the new format. I love this topic because it gets into my my concern with this is that there could be almost a new meta, a new value on on what goes into building a team. Um, you know, immediate success will help in summer uh, with the seating so why don't you go ahead and expand on a little bit uh yeah uh, what I've, from what i've seen from the different teams like my uh, thoughts on tl are they are gonna gel immediately just because they're mostly the same team and they get to people who jensen really wants to play with so they're already gonna have good team chemistry there whereas teams like c9 they're gonna be 
in a tough spot with that because there are so many new people in the team and they have so many rookies. So it will be very tough for them to to gel right out of the bat and get performance out of the teams immediately. I mean, at the very least, they have the kickoff tournament, which will help. But I actually wonder, I mean, I we didn't talk about this in the, the previous call, but I'm actually wondering how many of these players are going to be able to get their visa stuff sorted in time for the kickoff tournament. Like, if you told me we have a kickoff <laughs> tournament that doesn't have Sword Art, Al- Alfari, or Perks in it, I would I would believe you. So, uh, I, I don't know, Mark, what do you think do. about this? I mean, in a sense, like, what, I think our first caller after our guests left um, referenced the fact that, like, regular season doesn't matter so in a sense perhaps it's not that big of a deal right yeah i think it can go one of two ways like spring performance now leads into summer placing so you could argue that it's it is much more important um but with with what blue jay was saying you know 60 percent of the games are in summer still you have the spring kickoff tournament you should have enough time to gel um and I, I can see it going either either way. Um, I know that's not a very sexy response to just be like, who knows? But it's how it's how I feel. I'm still like I'm still unsure until I really see it in in practice how I'm going to feel about the connected splits. I mean, I haven't seen it. Do you think there's a world where we go? But I can't imagine a, there's a world where it's like, ah, never mind. Now we're going to disconnect them because I think in doing this, it just makes it so obvious, like how weird it was that spring split was like, quote unquote, didn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I've said before that like championship points weren't the cause of the problem with like, like I said, it was the auto qualification off championship points that made things weird as yeah. opposed to like arguably seeding summer with them. Like you get regular season, summer points and spring playoff points combined to make playoff points or uh, yeah, summer playoffs. Like, I, I don't know. There's another way to do it where you can make spring matter off championship points and disconnect the seasons a little bit more again. Um, it would be really weird at this point to go back after you kill championship points and then did this. Cause now we're two steps removed from that system. Right. Uh, but, but I, I mean, I don't think anyone at riot is so unwilling to change their format that like, if the linking of the season actually is terrible and like fans are burnt out by, I don't know, week because because that's the concern, right? Is that like week three of summer rolls around and it's the same story as spring, and then you're bored for longer. Actually, I, I know the you know Greeley and them try to say like, hey, we're getting rid of the crunch by shortening spring, but you're also tying in summer now. So if, if spring storylines 100 percent carry over, I'm bored faster. Right. Hmm. I don't know. This is a. This is an interesting situation. I, I'm actually not sure. I, Monk, I don't know if you have additional stuff you want to throw away on. Yeah, also, I also just feel like if you say like uh, the two teams that won't make it into the playoffs of the turn, the early turn, the login tournament, they will also have kind of an advantage in the sense that they get more preparation time and they can look more into their opponents and scout them more because they will get out of that tournament faster, so they will have more. <laughs> off season to prepare so in that sense i think it will make the league a little bit more competitive also because of two teams going out early and having more prep time is there is oh. that the secret to the lock-in tournament is to just to throw if you don't think if you don't care about the money you just throw so you can get out and scout that could be a thing yeah it was funny when you said that because that's where my mind went right away. You were like, oh, the bad teams will lose. So they can get back to practicing faster. But in my head, I was like, yeah, let's just int out of this tournament. <laughs> hmm. This uh, is actually I, makes me kind of worried. I mean, I don't think any of the LCS teams would necessarily do that. But like, it, it there is a bit of a perverse incentive there. I, especially I really if, if your full it. roster is not there. You know, like, who knows how seriously people are going to take that initial round robin if C9 is not with perks and like, I don't know. You know, Alfari. Yeah, that's, that's also a thing like Alfari, Perks, and all the EU imports coming over. I think like last year, Broxa didn't come to TL at, and they uh, split, split started in like February or something like that. And now they have to get here one month before that. So I'm just wondering if it will be a problem to get the visas in time for all the EU imports. Because Broxa didn't arrive until like, I think it was week six or something right. of the spring split. 
His his was definitely a unique situation that you know would be a problem at any point. Um, in terms of where this is starting, like they said, you're taking three weeks out of spring and devoting it to this tournament, so it's it's not technically starting earlier, though on a calendar date it is. Um, I don't know. I I hope. I mean, the the visa issues that we always run. There's always some visa issues at the start of this at the split. So I, I think we'll we'll un inevitably see some. I just hope it's not any of the the big big names. Yeah, well, I I guess we'll see. Uh, Monk, is there anything you want to shout out before we move on to our final set of callers? Uh, I want to shout out you guys for having a great show that was able to keep me awake until 7 a.m. And I want to shout out uh, TL for being the best org in LCS. Why? Why are you? St why did you stay up this late anyway? Because LCS is king. Am I right? NA greater than EU. <laughs> what, who are you? I I love the sh the shill. You know what our demographic is. I like, I'm a big fan. I f I feel like an American, even though I'm from EU. A NA over EU any day of the week. Love to hear it. Uh, I love to hear it. It's also funny watching Twitch chat just try and compare you to other pros. It's like, oh, it's Broxa, it's Santorin, it's Wicked. You know, like yeah. there's all these. I, people I mean, I, I'll I'll take that. That's <laughs> yeah. a compliment. That that's a compliment. Yeah, very good. Well, hey, thanks so much, the monk. I uh, I appreciate your call, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Get some sleep. Yep. I will do. All right. He's like our second Danish guy, I think. Um, he's not the only Danish guy, I think, that stays up. Why, why can't I remember the name of our other Danish caller? Or is he There's Swedish? There's a couple viewers that we, we have. There's another Nordic person. Uh, thank you to Longhorn979, Sapumis for the Prime, and Kyle zero eight zero eight for gifting the sub to Captain Flowers. I am, I am starving right. for subs. Okay, here we go. So I have an idea on how to structure it, and I want to bounce it off you, Travis. I'm thinking that we can have this little bit like a debate where we'll kind of give their opening arguments for why they 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 think that their team is going to win okay. uh, or why they're going to be right, and then they can maybe Start go back and forth other. a little bit more and forth with uh, with us. Uh, okay, you know. So first off, let, let's do some intros. So first off, JNT, JNT, where are you calling from? Uh, San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, Texas, and returning to the show in in the corner, uh, we have Mahmoud. Mahmoud, where are you calling from? Uh, yes, this time I'm calling from USA. Oh, oh. Uh, wait, is that true? Yes, yes, uh, Arizona, Arizona. Where in Arizona? A uh, Phoenix area, Phoenix. It can is, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Can, am I allowed to ask what, how you ended up in Arizona? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, I can go. So uh, my mother, she has work here, and you know we have family here. So uh, you know we are living with family, and uh, you know I also have uh, am going to be going to university here. So oh, cool. uh, yeah, yeah. So we are probably going to be staying for a long time. And, you know, the reason we were in Iraq was because, you know, uh, I think every human knows this, like, there is no other place than better than home, right? Yeah. So, you know, we, we love uh, Iraq and we love the place, even though maybe it's not as good as USA or, uh, or EU countries, but it is still home for us, right? So Very good. Well, that's a that's a touching sentiment to begin the, the conversation. So, uh, Mark has told me that both of you have uh, a team that you think is going to win the lock-in tournament, and I'm excited to sort of hear which team and why. So, why don't we start with you, JNT? What which team is going to win the lock-in tournament and why? So, I have TL winning it uh, mainly due to their continuity, sort of in their play style and their roster. I'm sort of of the opinion that. Uh, Santorin is somewhat uh, comparable to Broxa and Xmithy in terms of like their overall play style. And I think just that Santorin brings the best of both worlds when it comes to Broxa and Xmithy. Uh, similar to top lane, I think Alfari is just a better version of Impact and that he is a great carry player and also a great tank weak side player. Whereas um, teams like C9, TSM, and FlyQuest, teams who have you know, switched a lot up with their roster and then are most likely going to be switching up a lot with their play style might be slow to come out of the gate in the tournament. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, so you've got TL and you think it's based off of consistency. Mahmood, who is going to win the lock-in uh, for you and why? 
Well, you know, I have given a call about uh, Burks already, uh, so you know who I'm backing. It's going to be C9, uh, and mine is a bit longer than uh, my friend here. Uh, so basically, uh, the coaching staff for uh, for C9 is loads. They are definitely the leaders in in NA. Uh, they have all their all their coaches are high level players in solo queue. Uh, and this is something that is unheard of in league. Uh, usually, coaches right now they have been, uh, you know, not high level. They don't have game knowledge. They are more like facilitators. Uh, and you know, like I said, their their game knowledge is not good. But now teams have been getting uh, ex bro players, uh, and you know, C9 they have got Missy, uh, Max Waldo. Uh, Vigar V2. Uh, so Max Waldo, not many know him. He has uh, trained under LS, and of course, you know I've talked about LS. Uh, he is wonderful. Uh, so you know he's going to be able to input the ideas of LS, uh, and he's currently uh, very high in the NA Challenger uh, ladder. Uh, now, Fudge is coming in as rookie, right? And uh, Max Waldo is going to be a a positional coach, so he is going to be helping a uh, Fudge very very helpful uh, because uh, you know he is going to be able to one v one like no other. There, I don't think there is other any other team that has uh, ability to one v one. Uh, you know, with uh, players like you can play with academy maybe one v one, but it is not as good. Max Waldo is high, high any challenger, so uh, this is crazy. And uh, Vigar V2, he is another high challenger on EU West, of course. Uh, he has done the public coaching. He has a coach for Fnatic, uh, and he created actually not many people know this. He created a Garen Yumi composition uh, that was in 2019 Worlds. And he has also coached for TSM uh, for a small time, for a bit of time. Uh, and and like I said, all these coaches, uh, they're high elo. Uh, we can talk about Missy as well. He had one of the best careers as a EU support. He has a very solid vision on how to play the game. Uh, he has great leadership and uh, he has been on Fnatic, of course, as a coach. And, you know, he realized that it was too stressful uh, in his reflection with uh, with Soren. Uh, he realized it was, you know, very difficult to be a head coach. So now he's uh, as a strategic coach. And this is very, very important because he's going to be able to help the team with the vision of the game. Uh, and he also, of course, has synergy with Sven and Burks. Uh, and now I want to go into the one v ones, right? We're gonna, so, we're gonna, Mahmoud, we're gonna, we're gonna. I'll give you a quick, quick moment, but we have to, we have to. Get oh yeah, yeah, of course. Here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, Alfari... maybe, maybe less than a few minutes. Maybe thirty seconds. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So <laughs> Alfari, uh, he is seasoned, right, a veteran, but uh, Fudge has been uh, by LS. LS has said that Fudge has the, uh, he is the best top in NA. Uh, and also, uh, he has the Max Waldo. And also, Burks, like I have said before, he makes everyone who he plays with better. Better as a player, better overall. Uh, and I want to say something very important. Uh, we'll skip past the, the 1v1s, but TL, they have no leader. No shot caller, nothing like this. Uh, in, in last season, they got carried by their individual talents. They only showed uh, some synergy at week two of Worlds. And this is crazy because the entire year they have no synergy. Because, you know, in NA, you don't even need, like, basically in NA, if you're okay. good in lane, you're, we're you're going to win. We're going to time you out. So, so we, this, right. your, your, your allotment. We, we, I, we were a little underprepared for this debate. Uh, it was a last minute mm -hmm. decision, but in the future, we're definitely going to need to set time allotments. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sorry. I'm so no, sorry. No, you're good, you're no, good. no it's, it's okay. This is our fault for not planning this better. Uh, yeah. But we're going to have to give it, give the floor back to JNT to respond to uh, some of the C9 uh, problems that he might see with yeah. them. So I, I do want to say I, I'm in agreement with most of your argument, minus 
the ending where you kind of just said that TL got carried by individual players and they lacked synergy. But to go back to the C9 coaching, I do think that C9 has done all the correct steps into improving as a team, specifically within the coaching staff. But coaching is not necessarily an immediate effect. I think we're going to see that with many of the teams that have decided to bring in new coaching staffs like C9, like TSM, like Immortals. It's not going to be immediate impact for these coaches and coaching staffs to come in and make their impact uh, you know, right away. It's going to take time for the culture of a team to sort of evolve and develop throughout the season. And you know, it, it will take time for Cloud9. I actually do think that by the end of the summer season, when Worlds and Playoffs does come around, C9 will be the best team due to their uh, skill individually. So I completely agree with you there that you know Perks is going to be great. Fudge will be great, although he d will have to pass the litmus test of going up against you know all these great players. But to sort of now flip back uh, to where you said Team Liquid, you know, won based off of individuals and they didn't really have a shot caller. I definitely disagree with that. Um, if you look at Core JJ and the amount of you know how vocal he is within the team and how much he did for that team last year. Um, it was just insane. He was like the entire MVP of the summer split for a reason. He was carrying the game through support, which I don't think um, we've ever seen really in the LCS. Um, his Blitzcrank plays, his Thresh, his Rakan are top top tier. And I don't know. I'm trying to think of everything else that you said, but I think he mentioned yeah. the one v ones. I don't know if you want to reference that really quickly. Yeah. Do you, um, are, you, are you concerned about the skill discrepancy that C9 might might have over TL? Yes, I do think that uh, Perks is better than Jensen. Um, however, at least for the start of the season, Alfari is definitely in a tier above Fudge. I, I know Fudge. Um, he has been dominating Academy. He performed very well at with Mammoth at Worlds 2019. But Alfari is uh, the best top, la top laner in EU, although he did finish 10th place, 10th place on Origin last year. He was still voted the number one uh, all-pro top laner. And Wonder and Whippo have straight up come out and said that Alfari is pretty much the best top in that region. So I do think Alfari is coming into NA as the best top laner, and Fudge will sort of have to do what Licorice did back in Season 8 and really prove himself. I think he can and he will. But, like I said, it will take time. And I think the coaching staff will be able to help out with that. But it will take some time. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, I agree with you on the, you know, Alfari versus Fudge. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it is a bit biased to say Fudge will win over Alfari. But, uh, you know, one can believe, right? So, I'll give you the Alfari over Fudge. But Burks versus Jensen, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He's going to have the easiest time of his life. I mean, it's Back going to, to be crazy. And mid lane is so much more important than, than top lane. And and not only is Burks going to to take a boo-boo on him in the lane, but he's going to <laughs> he's going to have so many intangibles like leadership, which is something so you said that Core JJ is going to be talking. My friend this guy, I don't even know. Like his English is not even as good. Like, you know, not not all like uh, second language for English, right? Like Mahmoud, my English is pretty good. So you cannot be like not everyone can be like Mahmoud. This guy, <laughs> his English, it's mm -hmm. not very good still. Uh, he has been here for a while, but it's still not good. And he is not the the leader type. He is very individual player he does not have a voice on the team so you saying his leadership uh, no i don't think it, this i is guess i guess i would say to that would be to watch i guess some of the in-house streams because core jj is kind of turbo smurfing those and he does do a lot for you know i, I know obviously the in-house games are not an accurate representation of what he does for the lcs team but from what i remember hearing about core jj is very vital to yeah, yeah, the, the and, and I will tell you. I will tell you to look at last year TL perform performance. They they did not have any synergy. I mean, come on. Uh, I don't know, Travis. It sounds like the debate is, is winding I think, down. How yeah, do you yeah, feel I think about... we should have closing arguments. So I'm going to let closing each arguments. Have sixty seconds because what you suggested is that we should do a Twitch poll to see yeah. who won the debate. So I think we give each person sixty seconds. To make their closing argument to the Twitch chat to uh, to for for who they should vote for as the winner in this. So we'll start with uh, Mahmoud. Uh, you've got sixty seconds on the clock, starting now. 
Okay, uh, Max Waldo, Weigar V2, Missy, these are coaches for, uh, for, uh, for C9. Who is the coach for TL? Oh my god, it's Jat. This guy was playing in <laughs> season 2, man. What? I don't understand. Okay, not even uh, comparable. Uh, Alfari vs Faj, I will give to you. Blabber vs Santorin, Blabber, if he is on the form, if he is on his form, he is a much better jungler and he has Burks to work with. with. Uh, and, and Zven vs Tactical, we did not even talk about that. Zven is uh, the best bot laner last year. And he is uh, crazy, crazy guy. And he has Burks with him, he has Missy with him. Uh, Korjeje vs Vulcan, yeah, Korjeje is better, but Vulcan does not have to... Uh, he only has to mash up with him in mechanics and he does not have to be like shot color like Corjay Corjay does need to be shot color but he is not uh, and uh, yeah this is, this is what it is okay that was exactly 60 seconds good job uh, perfect JNT, timing nice your turn starting um, now uh, so on the topic of C9 I do think they're very good I think by the end of the season they will be the best team I believe they do have some of the better individual players compared to Team Liquid. However, it's not so uh, it's not as simple as just simple addition. Like a player, a player has a certain value just because they are of a total value doesn't mean that the overall team will perform at that said level. I think Team Liquid they're coming into the season with, you know, like I said, much more continuity in terms of how their team functions. I think that Alfari and Santorn are just better versions of the previous iteration of the roster. Um, they both bring more things to the table in terms of their gameplay and their styles. Uh, whereas I think it will take time for C9 to really gel together. Um, they're going to have to completely redesign their mid lane dynamic. Niski heavily played off of Blabber and Perks coming into the team. He's definitely going to be a more carry, carry oriented player. And we'll really have to see how that affects Blabber. But it was a good debate. Uh, yeah, it's perfect 60 okay. seconds. Okay. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to start the poll now. While the poll is going, I'm going to have you guys do your shout outs. So Twitch chat, if you're in Twitch chat right now, shout for, shout, uh, vote for one of the two of them. Uh, what do we, what do we win for the, for winning Absolutely the nothing. Mahmood, what do you want to, <laughs> what do you want to shout out? Damn. Uh, I want to shout out a couple of people. Uh, the real Slim Schmidty. He gifted me sub when I first came on and I did not, I forgot to shout him out. So very big thank you to him. Uh, Viet Jimmy actually just gifted me sub uh, this show, so very big thank you to him as well. Uh, the real Biggie Shees, he shouted me out in a previous show, so I want to help the Habibi. You know, his accent, uh, it scares me a bit, but, uh, you know, I love my brothers who, who shout me out, and maybe we can collab uh, on a stream or something. Uh, and I also want to shout out uh, Kaiser Mord. Uh, he is a very good uh, Kaiser uh, Mord Kaiser main. He's very, very good, and his stream is very amazing. Uh, and I want to shout out that Mahmoud will be streaming uh, after this show on Mahmoud Ibn Zubair, M-A-H-M-O-U-D-I-B-N-Z-U-B-A-I-R. And my Twitter as well, I have made a Twitter, M-A-H-M-O-U-D-I-B-N-Z-U-B-A-1, uh, one as in the number. Uh, and I also want to say, <laughs> Wait, freeze a week. <laughs> okay, J, J, J and T, what about you? What are your shout outs? Uh, shout out to homie Blue Jay. That's my guy right there. Um, I don't know. Shout out all the previous callers. TL Monk was a pretty chill guy. We're having a nice little combo in the waiting room. Very good. All well, right. thank you. Uh, and, dub up out here. And uh, can I can I link my? Oh, Twitch? and I'm oh, sorry. Hold on. Sh shout out to my debate counterpart. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah, thanks. Thank you guys for experimenting oh, yeah. with this. Of course, Mahmoud, uh, Mahmoud, you can. Uh, I'll I'll permit you type something in the chat so that I can permit you. Also, congratulations, oh. JNT, who won the poll. Uh, admittedly, somebody did spend sixty six hundred channel points. I'm guessing that that might have tilted the. the How does that work? That guy. Favor. You can spend the channel points that you get to uh, to get extra votes in the voting system. So. Oh, um, so we don't actually know who won. <laughs> I mean. Well, I it, won. I mean, if somebody is really passionate about JNT, like he might have, people who watch the stream a lot, they uh, their vote counts more than people who just showed up for the first time. Anyway, I, I, thank wish, you. I wish democracy worked that way, man. <laughs> thank thank you, Mahmood. <laughs> thank you, Mahmood and JNT for the call. Really excited about it. We'll check out your Twitch channel, Mahmood. JNT, you did a great job. Thank you guys both. Thanks. Thank you. And I also want to thank uh, JNT. He was very good opponent. Very good. Uh -huh.
We'll Thanks, have to guys. do it again sometime. Yeah, yeah, of course, sure. of course. I would be more than happy. See you guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, where's where's my mood so I can make sure he doesn't get timed out? Oh, he, yeah, hang on. You I'll got timed out. I'll you. Uh, I need to make sure I get his name right because it's a little long. Um, I think I think I did it. You can you can try again, Mahmoud, if you're here. You can you can link it in the chat. Um, anyway, that was a fun. Uh, Mark, I gotta admit, I'm happy you convinced me to do that. I thought that was really worked fun. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think to I be think, honest, uh, I kind of side with J and T by the way because I do think like even in a world where um, C9 has great coaching staff, like. This is the kick, the lock-in tournament. These co this coaching staff is going to have about five seconds to coach the team before they get onto the rift. But I don't, I don't know what you think. Yeah, I mean, part of it also depends on like what you've already agreed with going in versus who won the debate, right? Yeah. Because I probably I know, yeah, I'm not all... talking about who won. Um, yeah. Because they were both impassioned pleas, but yeah. Yeah, I think I, I agree with Jay. Well, no, ah, God, it's so hard to say. Like, I actually kind of agree with Mamu, just like. Perks is going to be the best player in that matchup. Uh, and early on in the season, like we're talking about the coaches not mattering. Well, neither will a lot of synergy type things and play styles and whatnot. And like, you know, you have the most important position in the map and you have the best player on the rift in that position. It, it could overshadow some of the other potential advantages and stuff. Yeah. Very good. Well, um, I want to thank them both for coming on. Uh, Mahmoud just linked his stuff. Is there uh I don't know, is there do we have any shout outs? Mark, I think you and I will do one more we haven't talked about this, but I think we just do one more episode of the show this year, which is next Monday. And uh that'll be we always do like a sort of recap. We take callers to reflect on the year. It'll also be after All Stars, so if there's anything from there we'll we'll have that to plug in. I'm into. sure there will be so much to talk about from All Stars. Yeah, so it's cannot, gonna be a banger. Cannot wait. It will be uh, a banger, actually. I'm excited. Yeah. It'll be different. Sure. Probably. Can't wait. Gonna tune. Um in. I will be by your place tomorrow to pick some stuff up. Safely, what time works yes. for you? Uh, the afternoon, I think, is fine. Early afternoon. All right. Ideally, bef before three thirty, so I can be home when Ash yeah, is off fine. work. That's okay. Fine. Cool. We will do I'll, that. I'll message you sometime. Yep. Um, and what else? Oh, stay tuned for the you know, Bergson interview. I'm guessing I'll do that this week, and then probably air it on Monday. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll air it before Hotline League or something. Um, also, a uh, shout out to members of your book club who, uh, you know, we talk on, on Discord and, and some of them are helping me out with something. Shout out to them. They're awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that happening? Did you reach out to them individually or did you talk about it? Yeah, I reached out to them individually. Well, uh, Mark's got some cool stuff he's working on that. Uh, shout Ma shout well, out to people. Uh, I've been avoiding the, the book chat because I feel like everybody else has probably already finished uh, the most recent. Oh, People yeah, have been putting more. spoilers in there, so it's it's relatively safe, but there's also yeah, just, nothing to really read if you have I haven't. just clicked in right now, and it's just all big blocks of spoilers. So <laughs> yeah. <really safe. laughs> um, but anyway, if you guys want to talk about books, go check out the book chat. Um, this is going to be a really great week. I'm really excited. I got some cool stuff coming up uh, all in, right. in the personal life, um, but also some cool stuff professionally. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Feels like there's something I'm forgetting. Oh, thank you to Greeley and Hunter as well for coming on. That was really fun. It was cool to have them both on. So. Oh yeah, that too. I forgot that even happened. Yeah. Yeah, they're very, very forgettable people. Uh, this has been Hotline League episode. What one fifty four? I think one fifty four. Uh. This has been Hotline League episode one fifty four. <laughs>